is the Glass Cannon Network. First of all, I'm from here. <laughs> Second of all, this fucking idiot is supporting the Eagles who are coming to town tomorrow to beat the Patriots. And you cheer for him. You cheer for him. And third of all, this behemoth just knocked a giant gray goose and soda out of my hands. <laughs> it, all, it then spilled into my drink and knocked that over as well. It and knocked, and the it knocked over my candy. All over Kate's candy. <laughs> over it. Kate's candy. My candy. Her candy, Joe. Ladies and gentlemen, Boston Joe. <laughs> Can I get a Grey Goose and soda? Um, <laughs> we, are, uh, we are sold out tonight here at the Paradise Rock Club. Let me hear you, Boston. Look at that. Amazing. Guys, we're standing in the... Who stood in the rain tonight? <laughs> Think you were wet then. Just hold on. <laughs> Your teeth don't get wet in the rain, but they'll get wet in here. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> still waiting on that vodka soda. I, uh, <laughs> as most of you know, uh, there are a few things that I enjoy in life other than that 55-day stretch from November 1st to uh, December 25th, Christmas Day. Um, well, there is one more chunk of time that I like arguably just as much 
And it started this week, this past Monday, with my birthday. It's all right. Now you cheer. Not a single text. Not a single happy birthday, Troy, on social media. It's all right. This guy, though, Boston Joe, gets away with murder. So it starts... I will give you my number after the show, sir. But it's not for my birthday. It's for yours. Um... Starts with my birthday, and then it goes straight through tomorrow, which is uh, NFL kickoff Sunday. It is the best, the best week of the year. And so when I was looking at the calendar, trying to decide when to do our annual Boston show, I said, shit, how about we take one of the best weeks of the year and make it even better by coming to one of the greatest cities in the world, nay, the greatest, <laughs> and selling out the paradise again. Here we are. Then, Starfield and Baldur's Gate 3 dropped this week. (laughs) They released on the same day, which uh, I'll admit it made this week impossibly even better. But now I regret booking the show (laughs) because I lost out on two days of playing those games. Uh, we, we should talk about this for a second. I know at least Joe, Skid, Sydney, and myself are playing at least one, if not two, of these games. And as the four people who appear on more shows than anyone in the network, I, I'm concerned about the future of the network right now. <laughs> yeah. this, is, this could be a I'm problem. I'm certainly concerned about the quality of this show tonight. Yes. Yeah. yes. <laughs> Joe is currently playing Starfield on his computer right now. Yeah, I know. Yeah. You know. <laughs> I'm just talking to NPCs, though. It's not a big deal. It's joining a couple factions. Is my mic on? It is on. Oh, I was worried. I love Baldur's Gate. <laughs> <laughs> what is your character again? Oh. You mess, how did you mess up character creation? <laughs> <laughs> I made a... Uh, she, her name is Snow Blight. Snow Blight. She's based on Snow White, but she no is a... She's no, horrifying. She's, <laughs> I made her... I thought she was so cute in character creation. She's a gnomish bard, and um, she looks like Lord Farquaad. Yeah. I gave her a fucked up haircut, and it didn't take me until I started playing the game and like the cutscenes of her reacting to other characters. Constantly, she's grimacing. She's like this. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, fuck! I made Lord Farquaad. Who's your, uh, who's your character, Joe? Have you not built a Baldur's Gate 3 character yet? This guy? Me? Yeah, what about your Starfield? No, 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 I haven't played Baldur's Gate 3 yet. Who's your Starfield character? What's his name? His name's Vic. <laughs> Just Vic? Vic with a K. He's named after Michael Vic? Yeah. <laughs> One of my heroes, yes. I just wanted to pick somebody that was a good representative of how I would act in my life. <laughs> At least you can rebuild those space dogs. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, oh, yeah. Guy drove eight fucking hours to get here, still gives me hopefully a double goose and soda <laughs> and replace Kate's candy. Um... Anyways, what about you, Skid? Who, what do, your, do you have a Baldur's Gate 3 yet or just uh, Starfield? I, I have, I've made a character for Baldur's Gate 3. I, I, I also, I, but I started playing Starfield. I want to get that done first. Character names? Oops, that'll be quick. Uh, the Insane. character's name is uh, Cincinnatus Fletcher. <laughs> I, I, what I do when I name characters for these video games is I go back into the Civil War roles and f- look at all the names of the colonels that served <laughs> on the Union side, and I'll pick one from there. That's what I usually do. That's fine. <laughs> it's so specific. <laughs> well, I'm not going to pick a Confederate colonel. No, but <laughs> like, I don't want to be. I don't want to be looking at that the whole time. I'm playing Starfield. I have uh, an elf wizard named Stiff Dickerson. Oh, yeah. Oh, that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I have a space scoundrel named Drip Masterson. <laughs> That's right. And master is spelled like master Did you say space cowgirl? Space scoundrel. But uh, that sounds like a fun... I was going to say, I'm going to download that game right now. Yeah. <laughs> I also heard space cowgirl. That's space exactly cowgirl. Right. Can, you, can you make a space cowgirl? Um, uh, no. You it might can be a do anything. <laughs> When I get that feeling, Listen, we are very fortunate to be able to travel all over the U.S. doing this show. We get to see a lot of great American cities and a lot of shitty ones, like Portland. Um, <laughs> it's a Poor war zone. Portland. It's a real war zone. Um, and obviously I'm biased 
But nothing compares uh, to Boston. I always leave these visits, and I, I go back home, and then I wait a couple days, and I uh, wait until my wife is like, yeah, I'll have a second beer, and then I'll be like, you know, what if we, uh, what if we move to Boston? And she immediately shuts it down. <laughs> But let me tell you, if I leave her or she has an accident on the basement stairs, <laughs> I'm coming back here. It's, it's really interesting to me that of those scenarios, there was no if, if she leaves you, which, oh. seems like, which seems like the likeliest of the three. How dare you? <laughs> also, me. you're going to be in really, really bad shape if she does actually accidentally fall down the basement stairs. <laughs> and know. this is on YouTube. Can you imagine? Like you're going to prison. If she that. actually had an accident, like, tomorrow. Dude, it's the perfect crime. He wouldn't have said it on stage and then pushed <laughs> yeah, her down the like, stairs. <laughs> he wouldn't have said it on stage or done it to his first wife. <laughs> his wife in England from 20 years ago that he accidentally pushed down. I didn't think anyone would know about that. Um, but I love coming here. We've had a hell of a time since we came into town. This is like a vacation for us. And uh, we went to Treehouse Brewery yesterday on the drive-in. As is tradition. Uh, then we checked into the hotel, beelined it over to the cask and flag into pregame before heading into Fenway. I brought all these yahoos into Fenway yesterday. Um, I bought a hat. Of course, these fair weathers left in the eighth. But your old buddy Troy stayed all the way to the final sad pitch. Uh, with my brother and Jen with two N's. Uh, we stayed it out. And then I, I left them and just, uh, I walked alone in the city for a bit. It was like 10, 30, 11. I was like, you know what? I want to live it up. I want to really enjoy Boston while I'm here. So I walked down to Back Bay from Fenway, walking down Newbury Street and Boylston Street. And uh, these were all like the same streets. I would constantly skip class at BC to walk down and just daydream all day. Um, so it was good to come back, just romantically wandering. As I'm walking, I see this fancy restaurant, uh, restaurant, restaurant on Newbury Street. Shut up. <laughs> Everyone here talks funny. Um, I saw this restaurant and I took my first girlfriend to this restaurant, uh, for our first Valentine's Day when I was in college. Valentine's Day, 1997. I remember being so nervous. I'm like, so old. I, <laughs> no, Matthew, Matthew just was in daycare at the time. Uh, and uh, I, was, uh, I didn't have any money. And I was like saving up. I'm like, please just order bread. And, um, <laughs> and then uh, every time I come back here you know, over the years, I'd be like, well, one of these days I'm going to go back there. And I'm like, you know what? Old Money Bags La Valley is going in there. So I sit down at the bar. I'm like, hello, barkeep. Let me see your uh, menu and your, uh, your drink list. Ah, let me get a list of your bourbons as well. And she sets me up with a napkin and fine cutlery. And I'm like, uh, and where's the restroom in this fine establishment? She's like, right down there. I'm like, thank you. I went downstairs, took like a 35-minute piss and left. <laughs> <laughs> I just really wanted to pee there. Because uh, I was hammered and I hadn't peed since the first inning. <laughs> But I'll tell you this, the rest of the night was a series of beautiful cathartic moments, and I'm glad none of you were there to rub them from me. Uh, me too, Troy. Yeah, me too. Me too. It, was real, it was a real special time. I was um, about to say, you're so special. <laughs> you're such a special man. I, am. I like being alone. Um, it's so true. So today we all got up and eventually we wandered down to the Faneuil Hall, Quincy Market area, and uh, we're all doing our own thing. Then we meet up for lunch, down a couple gallons of clam chowder, house a few lobster rolls, and uh, now we get to hang out with the only fans in the niche who truly appreciate Joe, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love you guys. <laughs> that aside, I do love coming here. It feels, I feel like I'm at a family reunion, except I don't have to like... Smile and nod while my uncle talks about the Mexican guy that started working at his company. <laughs> That's enough Bud Lights, Uncle Steve. <laughs> Folks, we got a dang hummer of a show tonight. Uh, yeah, we do. But something came up at lunch that I'd like to discuss. Uh, I guess you could call it bant. And uh, I will warn you, this is not for the faint of heart and will irrevocably change the, your opinion on one of the people sitting up here today. Apparently, Sidney Emanuel <laughs> oh, what is has a friend uh, who has a rather unique way no, of celebrating the their it. birthday. I have a friend. You will have your time. <laughs> this friend 
has a rather unique way of celebrating their birthday party. Oh, uh, no. In that, uh, now it doesn't surprise me that <laughs> Sydney has a sociopath for a friend. Um, <laughs> That's to be assumed, but the grim way in which she has chosen to take part in this birthday celebration needs to be discussed in public. Does it? So her friend yes. goes out every year for his birthday and buys the finest seafood in Queens. Because uh, everyone knows that's where you go get the best There's, seafood. That's right. There's you really go to good seafood. Fucking yes. Queens. Uh, that's what she said. He, you know, she goes, he goes out to Queens and buys all the seafood, comes back, brings it to his home, invites his all friends over. I get the sense that his friends have to then pay for this seafood. That wasn't clear. But no, anyway. Yes, it, it was. was $15 dollars $15 ahead. ahead. $15 yeah. ahead. But hey, you get lobster. Here's the catch. <laughs> no pun intended. In order to eat the lobster, you have to take a fun you Polaroid. You have to participate in the ritual. In the ritual, <laughs> right. This is like a Haster cultist ritual. You have to smile with your live lobster while it's kicking. Take an actual photo. You have to take an actual photo with the lobster. And then you have to stick a knife in its neck and kill it in front of everybody else. Because that's the humane way to kill that's the right. lobster. That's right. Humiliating at first is the humane way <laughs> to kill the lobster. So my question is, is something really wrong with Sydney? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I don't necessarily blame Sydney because it is her friend. Yeah. I mean, it's a red flag, but I don't think it's like anything well, necessarily She laughed with her. she told Hold the story. On. She didn't think it was fine. The, she thought it was cool. The, that's, that's a... Problem. The reason I brought it up is because my friend is from Massachusetts. So he, he grew up in the South Shore by the beach. No and he sociopath was like, has ever been born in Massachusetts. We, <laughs> <laughs> what are you guys talking about? <laughs> he grew up eating lobster a lot, and it was like a fun thing. He buys the lobster. He buys the mussels. He buys the shrimp. We, we all cook together, and it's very fun. But his rule is, if you're going to eat the food, you have to kill your food, which I think... And you have to be photographed doing why, it. <laughs> yeah. Here's my argument. Why yes, not? There's great honor in the killing ritual. <laughs> the, only, the only reason that you didn't like it is because you just ordered a lobster roll and you were like, I don't want to think about that. Well, I, I don't like, mind eating it if I don't kill it. I don't exactly. want to watch it go down. But the Polaroid too, it just seems a little disrespectful. That lobster might have children. All of a sudden, that Polaroid washes up on shore. <laughs> Bunch of lobster kids. We send it. We send it as a message to the children in the ocean. We throw yeah. the photos into the ocean, and we go, "We're coming for you yeah. next." Oh, next. That would, well, see, I would respect if that's how the end of the birthday was. You all took the photos <laughs> and threw them in, just to warn other lobsters. Skid, I feel uh, Matthew. I know you were appalled by this. I wasn't appalled. You were a little appalled. I I pointed out that there is no humane way to kill a lobster. It's yes. going to hurt the lobster no matter what you do. What's the humane way to kill a human? <laughs> uh, a, football, a football Very helmet carefully. made... A, no, no, I've thought about this a lot. It's, this is getting demonetized. Let him cook. Hear him out. Right now. A, 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 foot, a replica football helmet made out of plastic explosives. <laughs> Wait. Go out in the middle of the field. You have the trigger yourself. <laughs> And you just say, start running. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the most humane way to kill somebody is a Saw movie. Well, no, I mean, they, I don't know. Would there be? <laughs> I was saying more in the moments of death, it's very humane. Do you sell tickets to this event? Is this a ticket <laughs> sure. event? Well, you want to get a record of it. <laughs> yeah. Joe, you've been noticeably quiet about this. Have you killed a lot of animals? I'm sitting right next to her, so I'm trying to like <laughs> stay out of her direct gaze. I didn't. I didn't think it was that much of a red flag, but in the context of Sydney's, uh, you know, previous plans to buy and subjugate chickens, it uh, yeah, it oh, just starts. Here, to, it just she was like, I want to own some chickens. Here we go yeah. again. Keep with them the in a cage. The chicken talk. Yep. No, what bothered me was not the ritual itself. It bothered me a little bit. What bothered me was the glee with which you told the story. <laughs> like you weren't like, I've got this weird friend. Your thing was like, I've got this awesome friend. <laughs> He's a great friend. And you were friend. like, and, we, and every year we get together, we take pictures, and it's screaming, you know, I know to like I get know. away. <laughs> and then we jam it down, and we just put right at the top of its head. And then we boil it so that it's humane. <laughs> and I was like, I'm really weirded out by how gleeful the story's being told. I will say, the lobster tasted really good. 
So I no no ragrats, I guess. I mean, it was a good it was good lobster. Our lobster today was delicious, but Kate did not agree. Listen, I I just appreciate that Sydney likes us all enough to try to like get us to join your cult yeah. by telling us that fun story. <laughs> yeah. um, it is kind I'm of flattering. Most appalled by I am never going to speak at our cast lunch anymore yeah. because it's going to become a wild bant topic. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to share maybe some deep dark secrets during the lobster lunch too, and I didn't. Your day will come, and I'm glad. Your day will come. But you put a target on your back as soon as you tell Troy a funny story at lunch. <laughs> He's secretly typing it in his computer. Funny murder story with your friends. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking what... of murder stories, you guys want to play pretend? Yeah. yeah! Yes. Do you want to play pretend? No! Yeah. All right, we'll do one. Nerd! <laughs> Glad to see the drops are working tonight. <laughs> uh, before I start, is anyone at all excited or interested in the premiere of the Glass Cannon Podcast Campaign 2? Holy shit, that's this week? Oh my god. Yeah, oh my god. Oh my that's god. this week. Yes. Woo! Woo! One thing at a time. Glass Cannon Live, football, Starfield. <laughs> <laughs> One year ago, we were right here at the Paradise Rock Club in Boston, and we almost had a TPK. Who was here for that? You all are liars. Um, You know how terrible they are at this game. Um, (laughs) They've gotten a little better, uh, but on that night, it was real bad. And while we didn't get a full TPK, two out of the four party members that were here that night died. Right here on this stage, they died like a lobster. Like Not a, even the dignity of a Polaroid first. <laughs> yes, didn't even have the dignity <laughs> of, a, of a mere Polaroid. No one even took my picture. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> and Joe and Skid's characters were the sole survivors. In fact, their characters are the only characters that have been around since the beginning of this adventure when a group of strangers met in an asylum in a fugue state. Since escaping the asylum, they've been trying to track down the man who put them there, Count Hazerton Lowell's the fourth. They have followed this man now across both space and time, traveling recently to the dimension of dreams to speak with someone named the Mad Poet who gave Lowell's directions to a book called The Necronomicon. Lowell's is searching for this book because he seeks the lost city of Neruzaran, and directions to that city are supposedly in this book. When our heroes met the mad poet, they learned that Laos has been infected by a great old one, this unknowable alien entity known as Jaman Dor. And the reason he seeks Neruzaran is that he hopes to activate ancient monuments there to bring the entire world into Carcosa careful. (laughs) The mad poet tells them that Lowell's is heading to the Kadiran city of Kathir because he's seeking a uh, library of the uh, cult known as the Mysterium where allegedly a copy of the Necronomicon lies. So our heroes, after a long and hilarious boat journey south, They arrived last month in the nation just north of Kadira, the nation of Taldor, arriving in the port city of Casimir. Now, before heading further south to Kathir, though, you think back over what you've learned thus far, and you remember Casimir being mentioned several times in receipts and journals you found all over the Count's mansion at Iris Hill, all connected to an associate of Lowell's named Myaknian Mun. Remember that name. Meanwhile, after your encounter with the mad poet, Joe's character Atticus and Skid's character Aldo began to regain their memories after having a flashback of Laos bringing them to the mad poet's oasis and drowning them in a nearby lake. 
You remember that Myaknian Mun, in fact, is the one that supplied Lowell's with the sleeping drugs that allowed him to take you there into the dreamlands in the first place. But after your encounter at the Oasis, all of your memories begin to come flooding back. Atticus remembers Lowell's inviting him to uh, join him at his mansion to further his studies on the occult after he sat through one of your magic shows. Aldo remembers shortly after arriving here in Galarian from Earth, by the way, where we live, <laughs> being captured by a group of Knoll slavers and Lowell's purchased Aldo's freedom in exchange for helping Lowell's in his studies. In Aldo's memory, Lowell's even mentions that his good friend Myaknian Mun had taken a look at your formulae book and was quite impressed. So this Mun character is really your only lead here in Casimir. Gathering information leads you to a group known as the Esoteric Knights of Evolvement. What is the last word? Evolvement. Evolve. Like evolve. Yes. As an evolution. I wrote that down. You did a good job of like when a, you're not paying attention to a teacher and then the teacher looks at you, you just ask a question on the last yeah. word. <laughs> I appreciate that. But bottle cap. <laughs> Sweet. No. <laughs> so you gather information, lead you to this group, and you meet with a bleachling gnome by the name of Ethan Baylor. This is a friend of the boat captain who took you all the way from Thrushmore to Casimir. He's a little standoffish at first, but as he warms up, he tells you that Mun is a member of this group as well. He's a bit of a recluse, but also an alchemical genius. Most of the other members of this little secret society find him a bit off-putting, maybe even shun him. Etham hasn't seen him around lately, but he shares a rumor that Mun has had a number of visitors over the past year who have all mysteriously vanished without a trace. Perhaps they left by night, but it always struck old Ethan Baylor as odd. Mun would also mention from time to time a mysterious colleague who lives with him, simply referring to him or her as his anomalous friend. Ethan also gives you Mun's address, an old infirmary. He's apparently turned into his home and laboratory. So the end of last session, you arrive at Mun's house, leaving Matthew's character Ethel behind at the hotel since he's in a coma because that's what you do with good friends who are in a coma. You leave them alone in the flea bag motel. <laughs> Covered in their own feces, Covered, apparently. Well, <laughs> just you wait. The rest of you... A protective layer of feces. Ah, yes. <laughs> The rest of you stalk through the strange, overgrown grounds, noticing perhaps recent boot prints in the mud. You go right up to the door and knock. As you hear someone approaching the door in the distance, a voice enters all of your minds telepathically, the same voice you heard in the dreamlands when your memories came flooding back, the voice that said to come find them now that you are free. But the voice now said, the blot quivers, the lake ripples. His stain is here. I actually misspoke, and on the uh, Indianapolis show, I said the stain is here. His. His stain is here. Then just as you hear footsteps approaching to answer your knock, a trap goes off as the two angels displayed on the door spray burning hot liquid out of their angel mouths. Now, we have a long-standing tradition that predates the Glass Cannon Network that when you miss a session, bad things happen to your character. Not death, per se. That's too easy. Embarrassing is a nice word for what tends to happen. Often there's poop involved. <laughs> Matthew has missed not one, but two sessions in a row. <laughs> So tonight, we open on an exterior shot of the Menendez Brothers Inn. <laughs> we stalk down a hallway up to one of the rooms and through a door where we see poor Ethel Merman lying across a makeshift divan in a coma, covered in some sort of brown substance that cakes all over his armor and face and lips. 
in order to help myself get through this psychologically, I'm going to picture not my character, but the real Ethel Merman. <laughs> That's going to make this I'm much worse. I'm covered in poop, owl. <laughs> <laughs> She'd be quite upset. She would not like that. <laughs> we stay on his peaceful face for a moment until we hear a knock at the door. Housekeeping. Oh, no. Housekeeping. <laughs> oh, no. After a long pause, we hear the sound of a key entering the lock, and then the door opens as the man continues to knock. Hey! Housekeeping, hello, <laughs> coming in. <laughs> An overweight, bearded man enters the room with a mop and a cart full of cleaning supplies. Housekeeping, coming in. Takes a little swig of something in his shirt. <laughs> he goes to remove a couple of uh, glasses from a bedside table, and then he sees Ethel. He's like, oh, shit. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, sir, I'm sorry. And he starts to walk out, but then he realizes that you're not moving, and he sees a letter lying at the foot of the bed. Watches you for a second, sees the letter, maybe kind of peers down at the letter, and it says, Dearest Ethel, if you're reading this, you have just awoken from a coma. <laughs> <laughs> We are now in Casimir, in the nation of Taldor. You slipped into a coma after being decimated by a magical tree in the dreamlands, and then tiny murder clown phased into your body as you phased out. If any of this sounds confusing, we'll explain later. In the meantime, we are following up on a lead looking to speak to one of Lal's associates, a man by the name of Myacne and Mun, at the following address. And the address is written. If you wake, and you're feeling up to it, <laughs> meet us there. <laughs> this gross-looking housekeeper looks at the note, oh, no. then peers over at Ethel's sleeping body. He walks up to Ethel and pokes him with his mop. <laughs> hey there. What's your name, big fella? You thirsty? He pulls out some Jägermeister. He takes a little Jägermeister from the top and rubs it on your lips. Here's some Jägermeister. You thirsty? Are you familiar with the role-playing concept of lines and veils? <laughs> Don't miss two sessions. <laughs> Let's have a tea party. And from there, we cut back to the house of my acne and mud. <laughs> We're having fun. Um, we, had, we cut back to the house of my acne and mun, where four of our heroes just set off some kind of a trap. Everyone roll a reflex save. Uh, Woo! I refuse. <laughs> You're not you. We'll, we'll roll a different save for you. <laughs> Um, I forgot we had to actually play here. Uh, <laughs> Everyone just start fun. saying numbers. Just having fun. 27, 31. Stop, 31. Stop it. <laughs> what, did, uh, what did you roll, Sydney? 31. 31. Nice. Yes. Joe? 27. Kate? 26. Uh, Skip? I, 37. Whoa. All right. There you go. There you go. Sydney and Skid succeeded. Ooh. Matthew and Kate Excuse me, Joe and Kate. <laughs> Failed. You, at long last, have you no decency, sir? <laughs> Matthew and Kate and Joe. Failed. No. Uh, all right, this is a lot of damage dice, so I'm trying to find a good roller online. How many D6? I don't even own that many D6. All right, ready? Stop. Joe and... <laughs> Oh, man. Atticus and Eris take 51 points Oh, of damage. my God. Oh. Acid damage. And uh, Sydney, uh, excuse me, Suki and uh, Aldo, it's been a while, take 26 points of damage. 25, 25. Uh, 25. 25 points of acid damage. Just sprays all over uh, you. Brother. Oh, my God. And then at that moment, you hear footsteps running up the street. And it's Ethel. 
It's covered in blood from the guy who just did what he did to him. <laughs> I was like, I imagine Ethel woke up and just buried his hatchet in the guy's chest. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, oh, God! Oh, no! Not again! <laughs> Not again. <laughs> Why does this keep happening? <laughs> this exact scenario. <laughs> See, I didn't take away your agency. <laughs> You see Ethel come running up, and you've all been doused with acid that shot out of the mouths of these angels. What do you do? Uh, Eris goes... Ah! <laughs> <laughs> ah! <laughs> My face! <laughs> <laughs> good choice. Good, good choice. <laughs> really good choice. You know what? Bottle cap. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a giver. I don't have any, though, unfortunately. So just remember. So she has one. The rest of you have zero. Um, Ethel comes running up. While Eris is screaming on the doorstep, Atticus, what do you do? Uh, he does the same thing. Except he's <laughs> bottle cap. Yeah. Wait, yeah. I, me too. I do the same. Yeah, scream. he's grabbing his face, screaming, and uh, he is going to yeah writhe on the ground in pain. Okay, let's go to the map. Oh God. Davy Maps. Ooh. Oh, Davy Maps. Oh, Davy Maps. Dump, 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 dump. Fo- footsteps approaching the door, and the door opens. Oh, come oh. on. Oh, no. What? We need at least four hours to rest. <laughs> I lost like half my hit points from the door. <laughs> the door opens, and standing there is a surprisingly handsome young man oh. in his 50s with short, messy, blonde hair and glasses. He's wearing a, a, a long brown coat that looks like a, maybe a lab coat, but, but made out of the same material as like an iron worker's apron. It's thick. Um, and I will show you what that person looks like while you guys sit in silence. <laughs> there he is. Oh. Oh. That handsome devil. I don't think he's handsome. He... <laughs> I just wanted to say that Ouch, for the record. Kate, that's so uh, off the rude. bat. Someone drew him based on themselves. <laughs> <laughs> they to watch this show and you're going to think you think they're ugly. He, <laughs> he looks like Thomas Dolby. Right? Quick Google for that one. She blinded me with science. <laughs> oh, okay. He looks, yeah, Google him. Like, he really does look like Thomas Dolby. Not, I not now. What? He's, in a, he's in a hospital bed there. Don't look at him there. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't look like it look, there, there, there. Okay, yeah, yeah, I see it. See, I see it. Looks like Thomas fucking Dolby. I think he's okay, but let me check. Okay, let's make. He's sure. moonlighting as a piezo artist now. <laughs> um, he uh, he opens the door and he looks a little surprised to see you, and he says, "Oh, hello there. I I do apologize that it took me so long to answer the door. Uh, I must admit I'm incredibly busy at the moment, working on an experiment." For the Talden Navy and simply cannot be disturbed. I, I do feel downright awful that I am presently unable to take callers, but perhaps you could return tomorrow. Thank you so much. No! And he shuts the door. Suki tries to put her arm. Suki puts her arm, blocks the door. Uh, oh, be careful. I wouldn't want you to hurt your arm. Uh, I, but I, I cannot have guests at this time. Let's just move your little arm here. She I puts can... her other arm. Oh, <laughs> all right. Um, are you selling something? What is it that I can... Uh, cookies? Your door just sprayed acid all over our faces. Oh, I thought that that was shut off. I am, I am so sorry. That's meant to keep out nosy intruders. Uh, my most sincere apologies uh, for any inconvenience that may have caused you. Uh, here, hold on. And he reaches beside the door and throws a towel at you. <laughs> oh my god. Please accept my humble <laughs> gift of a towel. May it bring you peace in your time of pain. And he goes to shove the door again. I go to put my arm in <laughs> Would your friends like a towel as well? Is that why you continue to hold the door here? And he drapes it over your hand. And then another one. How many do you need? 
I'm gonna shoulder, like, try to push the door in against him. Oh, oh, please now. Oh, no let me reason. take my arm out of the door yeah. then. No reason to get uh, This pushy. ain't Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, mate. Towels have no value here. Uh, <laughs> Ethel, Ethel's like, I, I actually could use a towel or two. All right, you take... Oh, Ethel's oh, here. Ethel. <laughs> you actually could use a towel, probably. Ethel, you're, you're awake. Oh, yeah, uh, hi. No, no, don't look at me like this. And she, like, goes up to the <laughs> door and she's like, listen, you... And she looks at you in the eyes and she's got like a very, like, she looks already kind of wild because she's a flesh warp, but also her face is melting and she's going to try to intimidate you to not shut the door and help us out. Okay. And just being like, unless these towels are magical, you better help me like right now. I just went down. I, I, I feel awful. My face is melting off. You better uh, help me or I'm going to, and she, her mouth and her neck starts to open and it's like, he, and just like, I swear to God, man, if you just, you know. he's very contrite. He's like, oh, oh, all right. So roll against his will, DC. And Can I aid? Uh, sure. What are you going to do today? I stand there covered in shit. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and roll for it. <laughs> I'll, I'll allow it. And blood. It's the least I can do. <laughs> Fuck. Oh. Did you me? Uh, I got an 18, so no. Uh, it's your you friend covered in feces. Fuck. That was distracting. And what did you roll? 27. Fortunately, it doesn't seem... To, unfortunately, it doesn't seem to phase him. But as he continues talking, and Aldo, you slip into the room, you are like, I know him. I know him. It's my acne and mud. This is him. You know the voice... You know the face. Your memories are clouded because they're coming back to you all at once and they're sort of all overlapping. I imagine every day like new things are coming in. So maybe you haven't had that exact memory where you've seen his face, but now that you're presented with him, the voice, the face, everything, you're like, this is him. Uh, Again, I, I'm so sorry, but uh, I, I will have to ask you to step outside. I'm I'm not allowed to have man? visitors. Um... Yes, this is... My acne and man! Um, yes, this is his house. This is... No, you! You're my... This, look, hey, this is my acne and man. I've seen you! I've seen you, mate! Well, I, I, I apologize if I don't uh, remember us meeting, but now, now that you mention it, you do have a, a rather familiar uh, countenance about you. Uh, it is perhaps we met. I, I, I do apologize that I didn't recognize you. Remind me your name. You know my name, mate. Aldo Kazimir. Aldo Kazimir. Aldo yes. Kazimir. Yes. Oh, how has it been, old friend? Not great. Let us in. I, I, I cannot. I have this. I am. Oh, whoa. I have so many deadlines. Pulls out a pocket watch. I, I must. I must go. I, I, I do ask you to please uh, step back onto the porch. Eris, kill him. Okay, here we go. I'm getting ready to kill you now. And she really doesn't want to do that because she's hurting, but she's acting like she's getting ready to. Oh, please, there's no reason. She's uh, taking out her staff. Uh, we, we really, I, 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 uh, was it something I said? I, I do apologize. my poppet no, who I tells me my spells. Ethel's going to push his way into the, he's gonna, uh, into the porch and get in there with Aldo. All right, so show me where you are on the map. Let's say that I wish he I actually backed up. Uh, oh, yeah, I had you invisible because you were having a tea party. <laughs> now you're there. Uh, please, uh, Aldo <laughs> went straight through the wall. All right, so Aldo, you are in there. Ethel, you uh, come up as well. And he's like, uh, please, um, gentlemen, I, I am sure we can discuss this rationally. I, if this is, has anything to do with me not remembering you, I, I, my, a thousand apologies. I, it's just I, I've been very wrapped up in my work. There's really no, no reason to fight, but I, I do need you to leave this uh, uh, place immediately. Father will be very upset. Very upset. Father? Father? Father. Is there a priest living here as well? <laughs> Is it finicky wet whistle? Um, no, 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 no. I, um, I, I just, I, I need you to leave. Troy, is there a door in this room? There is a door in this room, and it is uh, right to the north. Uh, and I believe there's one to the south, too, right next to you. All right, I'm going to open the door next to me. Uh, and when you do that, he said, I said leave! Roll for initiative. Oh! <laughs> oh, 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 
This is all vodka. <laughs> Thank you, Brian. Um, Suki, what did you get? Sukes. I didn't roll well. That's uh, why I asked. I got a 21. 21 for Suki. Yeah. Ethel. Uh, 20. Dirty 20. Dirty 20. Terrible roll. So dirty. Eris. Natural 20. Oh! Um, Do you want to use a bottle cap to reroll your initiative? Maybe. Should I? Yeah. Uh, should I? Um, so that's a 35 total. And I got a free fee, or not a free fee, I got a free action um, when I roll initiative as one of my new feats. And I'm going to battle cry and demoralize oh, yes. this guy who's now a foe as a free action. Because I'm a master in intimidation. Nice. Oh. Yes. nice. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. What do you say? I say, <laughs> I told you, and then she or she points her staff at you, and it starts glowing crazy, like green eyes, and her mouth opens, and then Ooh. her pop it just goes, Ee! and it just it freaks you out, man. You don't know what's going on. Roll intimidation. See if you're able to. It's a, it's a free action. Oh, it's a free yeah, you still action. Got a free oh, action. You still got to roll. Oh, shit. I know it's a free action, but we still have to measure it somehow. It's, right. it's like if going it's to a store and be like, I have a coupon. I saw free and was like <laughs> sick. <laughs> if I want to use a hero point, do I need to tell you now? <laughs> bottle cap. You mean that sweet, fresh bottle cap? Oh, bottle cap. Got? Sorry, sorry. Yeah. Uh, you can. You have to use it before we move on. Yeah. Do you want to re-roll it? I or do think... you want to just save it for something maybe a little more important? Well, maybe you should save it because at that moment, Ethel, hearing <gasps> you say this, also gets a battle cry. What? Oh! Whoa. As a free action. And he will say, what did you say to him? Babe, what? He'll say, <laughs> he'll say, she told you. Oh my God. <laughs> That's my man. <laughs> wow. And I roll a natural four. Oh, no. <laughs> four at 20. What did that? Power I got a 28, couple. by the way. A 28. <laughs> what did that poop covered guy say? <laughs> uh, two fails. Shit. All right, well. Well, well. Atticus, what'd you roll for initiative? 19. Aldo. Uh, 25. 25. All great initiatives. I'm going to go first with my 41, if you don't mind. Oh, Do you mind if I go first? With my 41? Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, All right, yeah. so let's fucking go. No. First thing he does is he's mad, and he, like... As he, as when he was so polite, so kind, the second you put your hand on that door to try and go to the south, he just like hulked out, and you can feel this negative energy like coming off of his body, and it starts to enter all of yours. Everybody, roll a will save. Uh. As this overwhelming feeling of dread begins to wash over you. Okay, this is not my night. Oh, it's my night. Let's go. Uh, let's start with Sukes. 33. 33 Ooh. for Suki. Not bad. 36. Oh, also oh, not nice. bad. Eris. 29. Not bad. We'll come back to Ethel. Aldo. Uh, 35. 35! Yeah. Ethel. 22. What a shame. What a shame. Everyone except Ethel is frightened. One. Ethel is frightened. Two. Oh, 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 baby. This man looks mad. Now, Ethel, I'm going to say that you got that door open. Okay. Just so uh, you have a little more room to play here, and you see a, a little room. I'll give you a description of that room. Looks like a small study. There's like a little library in there, a couple interesting old maps. Is that, a billiard, is that a billiards table? A little billiards table, yeah, no. Uh, <laughs> some uh, frames hanging on the walls, a couple of captain's chairs. Obviously, you can't, you don't have a lot of time to take in the room. But uh, thankfully, you don't see any other enemies in there. This guy used two actions to unleash that dread on you. And then for his third action, he's going to... I guess I'm going to punch you with my fist. (laughs) How eloquent. I'm going to punch you, Ethel, with my fist. How very Boston of you. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. What'd you say about the socks? Wow! 
That's what, when I was going to college, you used to call that a mash pea conversation. <laughs> they had a down year. All right, here we go. Boom sauce. This could be a critical. That is a 40. Yeah, it's a 40. Question for you, though. Am I still stupefied? Uh, from like three episodes ago and four months ago? I don't remember. No. The damage was done in the Menendez Brothers Inn. All right. <laughs> yeah, that's still a crit. That's a crit. All right, so 30 points of bludgeoning damage. Oh, my God. Dude, just like wham. Now, here's the good news. One enemy, and he's done. Can you guys capitalize? You rarely do. Eris. It's my turn? Yup. Oh, that's right. I rolled a 20 on my... On my... Okay, so... Shit. A 20 on my... Oh, my God. So, I'm already down half my hit points, and this guy is really strong, so I'm gonna uh-huh. chug a healing potion... Chug it. So I guess I use an action to take it out, and I use an action to drink it. Yep. And I'll do that when it's not my turn, the points and everything. Okay. Um, but I guess then for one more action, um, shit, shit. I want to cast Guidance on someone. I guess Guidance on Ethel. I feel like you need it the most right now because you're frightened, and you're our, our power. Let me ask you this. Can, do you have to see the person to cast guidance on them because he is around the door and I feel like being a stickler. It's I'm from here! It says range 30 feet, target one creature. It doesn't say I need to see him. Let's have Joe be the one that rains on your parade. <laughs> yeah, you cannot cast it on someone you can't see. God damn it! Boston, Troy. That's just... <laughs> Forget it. You had your chance. Well, you had your chance. I cast, right, a little more. <laughs> I cast a uh, shield on myself. Shield on. Shield on yourself. Aldo, Casimir, you barged right into this room. You don't know what your connection is to this guy. The memories are flooding back, but you know he is a part of your past. I first, I would like to do a knowledge check of some kind to figure out. But first, like how we did. 30 points of damage on a punch. Yeah. The guy who did, she blinded me with science. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> she blinded me with So what, what, uh, what, what, what would be applicable um, here? I'm going to say, oh, this is a tricky one. I kind of want to do society, but what are your better skills? Because I want to give you some leeway here. A cult, uh, maybe? I have clown lore. Clown lore? Uh, <laughs> do you really have clown lore? I do. Uh... <laughs> Uh, I have ancient history lore, alchemical lore. Well, this scene, this guy looks like you've heard that he's an alchemist. Let's try a little alchemical, alchemical lore. lore. Why not? I think that's actually pretty damn perfect. Fucking. Uh, 22. 22. Okay. You look at this guy and you, you really think that this is him. But it was a little weird, your conversation. But something seems a little off. And as you look at him, you look just past his glasses at his eye, and there seems to be a little seam right under his eyeball where it looks like nothing is beyond it. Oh. Whoa. And so Wait. you think this might be some sort of not real person situation. Wow. You've heard of alchemists doing the, uh, the forbidden and creating life. Yeah. I've been watching a lot the of... The Lombada of science. Um, maybe this is uh, what happened here. Well, uh, Aldo, he sees this, and he says, Sir, I think you are not all you seem! <laughs> Trying to uh, throw him off with the pun about yeah. the seam under his eye. It's good. And I'm I going to... <laughs> Nice. And I am going to throw a bomb at him. So now it's probably a good time to mention that we did do a little retroactive shopping. Yes. Right? Yes. yes. You guys want to talk about what you bought? Well, at least for me in this moment, it would seem uh, germane because I bought a plus one thrower's bandolier. Oh! In which to store my bombs. And then I bought a thundering uh, rune to imprint upon it. Nice. 
which, according to the properties of the item, allows me to do an additional 1d6 points of sonic damage on each bomb that I throw, and on a critical, a chance to deafen the target. Nice! Wow, okay. And a chance for me to use my cool ACDC drops once in a while. <laughs> well, that's what it's really all about. So that's a double win. All right, so, so you're going to toss a, one of these special new bombs at this dude. Yeah, I'm going to throw an alchemist fly right at him. It's right at his feet. Boom. Uh, there we go. That is a that is a 34 to hit. That is a hit. Nice. Yes. Uh, okay, that is, that is 18 points of damage. Okay, 18 points of damage. Uh, five of which is Sonic. Copy that. Okay. Um, he is on fire. He is on fire. Okay. And I am going to throw a second alchemist fire on him. First things first, a couple okay. things are going to happen. All right. As this man takes damage, it sets off a reaction where he's just like, what are you doing? And he starts raging. Oh, Something known as reactive rage. Oh, oh, oh no. From oh. taking damage, now he flies into a frenzy. And he's just like, Aah! and you see this and you think, I bet you he's going to have a bonus to attack and temporary hit points. That's what I think That's he's going to have. That's what one would think. And maybe his AC will go down. Now you can take your turn. Okay. Uh, so, he's just, uh, there's no need to get angry, you moron. What? <laughs> you hit me. Uh, that is a 25 to hit. 25's a miss. Okay. Splash. So, there is a boom. There's this, like, pop sound, a sonic boom as the bomb hits near his feet, misses him, and but uh, still does five points of damage to him. Five points on the splash, and now it is... Suki's turn. Give it up for Sidney Emanuel, everybody, huh? Yay! Sydney! That Sydney is a stone cold killer. <laughs> but Suki is not. Or is she? I don't know. Um, I am going to two action cast heal on Ethel, who I can see because I'm diagonal. I'm peeking around the doorway. I can okay. see Ethel. Cool. Uh, I'm only going to do it first level because my other ones I have hyped up and it's just more than you lost, but it doesn't make sense to use. So that's going to be 12 points uh, back to you, and then I'm going to command Pepsi. Thank you. I forgot to put Pepsi on there. Yeah, because my other two are too high. Uh, And then bring me my snake. Give me a minute. Give me my boy. Bring me the snake. Bring me my robes. Put on. Where's my boy? I'm looking for him. I lost Pepsi. Um, where's Pepsi? He's coming. All right. And then I... Trying to find something funny. Oh, my God. Well, he's just a snake. Is Coke okay? <laughs> he's just a normal snake. All right. So I command Pepsi, and then Pepsi is going to move in next to Mun... Um, what's he going to do? He's going to attack. Pepsi is going to attack with his jaws and take a chomp. All right. At my acneum. That is a 27. That is a miss. Okay. Now we know. Yeah. <laughs> the more you know. <laughs> and that's the end of my turn. And that's the end of your turn. And now it goes to Ethel's turn. Uh, Okay, Ethel is a little scared, but he's backed into a corner. When something scared is backed into a corner, uh, I don't know, in Ethel's case, he freaks out. So he's going to double slice. Uh, We're going to... Okay, uh, hammer, hatchet. Okay. Okay. (laughs) Okay. All right, let's start with the good news. The hammer is a 36 to hit. That is a hit. That's great. Nice. A palpable hit. Okay. So that'll be... And also one of the things we upgraded was my hammer. So in addition to uh, we paid to swap a rune from a plus two short sword we found to my hammer. So it's now a plus two war hammer. You want to know what these nerds do? They're doing all this shopping during sound check. Yeah. Even though I asked them to do it three weeks ago. (laughs) 
I call that okay. efficiency. Uh, and I, we also we also paid to give it a property rune. It's now because when the when the hammer connects with this mun ish mun fella mun fella that uh, handsome devil. All of a sudden, it crackles with lines of frost and deals one d six frost damage on top of yeah. it. Twenty six or one d six. One d six. One d six. Five hundred. <laughs> What's the total damage? Uh, Math, 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 math. 20, math. 23 points of damage, six of which is frost. Nice. 23 points of damage, six of which is frost. And did you miss on the other attack? I rolled a natural one on the other attack. Natural one. That is a fumble. Should we go to the fan fumble? Oh, shit. Damn it, Matthew. Anybody from Waltham? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Boston's so competitive, you hate other cities. <laughs> like, we're, all in, we're all on the same team. Uh, uh, all right, this one from David and Sarah in Boston. Anybody? Hi, no? David and Sarah. Yeah. Super yeah. fans, David, Hi, David and Sarah. Sarah. So, <laughs> thanks for such huge fans. David and Sarah. Tonight. Way to listen to the FOD, <laughs> David and Sarah. <laughs> All right, this one's called Not a People Person. <laughs> Bottle cap. You react to your incredible <laughs> ineptitude with profanity so shocking that even Sydney would be embarrassed. <laughs> wow. Oh, man. <laughs> you, wow. Your what allies you and even enemies look upon you with disdain. You are demoralized, frightened one for 1d4 rounds. Oh, oh wow. No. So are you saying that... Ethel starts releasing a barrage of obscenities? Yes. And Matthew, gets... I think you should role play this. <laughs> yeah, I think so, yeah. What horrible things come out of Ethel's mouth? What does Ethel say when he misses? <laughs> and you should stand up and do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Give, give him a... Si- do we have, like, a little step stool or something? Get this guy a soapbox. Matthew! This so, is the Matthew. Just to be clear, I'm. I, this is the profanity expressing disgust at my own ineptitude. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I say this to myself. You. 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 Fucking divorcee! Oh! Oh, wow! Wow! Oh. Wow! Wow! wow. That would demoralize you. It's sad. It's sad. So I'm hey. one. So I'm frightened wow. one. Sorry, you guys had to see that. <laughs> we'll edit it out of the video. So I'm frightened one. Yeah, you're frightened yeah. one on top, but you were already frightened two. I was frightened two. So let's make stack? them stack. You're frightened three. Oh my god. We're having a good time with our good time pals. All right. Well, let's see. Uh, so for my third action. Oh, you're still going. Yeah. That shouldn't stack. You shouldn't stack. Willy nilly <laughs> stacking? Are you serious? <laughs> Be careful, I'll start stacking you, and you. I'll stack you guys again, too. You haven't laughed at a single one of my jokes. Yeah, I decided it stacked because we made up these critical fumbles. <laughs> so I'll pretend. Okay. See the screen? Uh, I am going to, why not, uh, I'm going to try to grapple this guy. Okay, there you go. sure. Ooh. That usually works. It's, it often does against you, actually, but not on my third action, but he's why on, not? He's on fire. Yeah. He is burning. Ethel's covered in shit. That's, yeah. <laughs> That's going to be a horrible smell. Yeah, what's that horrible smell? It's like Jägermeister and burning poop. Are we near a tire dump? Uh, okay, that is uh, 26 against your 26. fortitude DC. Against my fortitude DC? Get out of here with that sausage. <laughs> Pretty good roll, too. Uh, okay. <laughs> and I now go down to Frighten 2. It is Atticus's turn. Atticus, yeah. You've been a little off ever since you spilled my drink. Yeah. <laughs> I felt it. I felt that energy from you. Yeah, I mean, this is this is a horrible situation. He's frightened. He's going to fall back. Uh, stumbling. I mean, he's down way more than half his hit points. Mm-hmm. Yeah, more than half his hit points. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And he just stumbles back, face burning. This thing is like hulking out and raging. Uh, and he's frightened. So I'm just going to have him fall back. And then in fear, thinking he 
just wants to try to hurt it somehow, he's going to pull some sort of uh, loose stone or something from outside and whip it at this guy with a projectile. So a Word. telekinetic projectile, uh, little fit rat fingers just shaking. He's, whoa! And he whips this thing across at this guy. And that, dude, is a 36. There you go. That's a hit. Hit! That's a hit. There we go. Uh, that is 21 points of bludgeoning. Oh! Nice. And now, it's the top of round two, and it's back to my turn, and I'm gonna do something cool. This is a two-action John called Uncanny Approach. I'd like to lift the veil so we can all learn together. He is going to stride, then faint at a creature within melee reach, and then strike. Here's the thing, if I roll a success on the faint attempt, I get a critical success instead. This is gonna be a deception check against the perception DC of either Aldo or Ethel. One, two, three, Aldo. Four, five, six, Ethel. <laughs> five. Oh no. It's coming at Ethel. All right, so this is going to be a deception check against your perception DC, perception plus 10. This is gonna be a 33. Larry Bird in the house, everybody. <laughs> That's a success. So what is, you're moving or you're not moving? Oh, don't worry about my move. I don't need to move, because I'm right next to you. Wasn't the, the You oh. said stride. You have to stride, man. All right, then I'll stride right there. Uh, he's gonna I'll step score. down to there. So, I don't know what's happening. <laughs> At that moment, you hear a sound from outside. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know what's weird is if I have to, technically, if I have to stride, then yeah. that can't be a step, so that would be a stride which would provoke from you, Ethel. I will give you the provoke. Okay, great. No one. Natural 20. Oh! oh! Yeah! And this is why I'm not generous. <laughs> Son of a biscuit. All right. I... I guess we'll do a fan critical. Oh, dude, we got a fan critical from an O'Brien. Tom O'Brien in Boston, Massachusetts. Todd O'Brien, Todd? Yeah! Yeah! All right. Thank you for actually bothering to show up. Yeah, thank you. (laughs) Tell David and Sarah they're dead to us. My man. All right, Tom O'Brien from Boston writes in with... Fatal John. Oh! Or Fatal John. You find your opponent's weak point and hit it hard. Emphasis my own. I don't like the way For you this said attack, that. your weapon gains the fatal trait. <laughs> Equal to your weapon's damage die. Your opponent makes a fortitude save against your class DC. So, right. uh, yeah, fortitude save. 24. That my, what's my class, TC? I, I can't think. That's a fail. That's a fail. <laughs> that's a, yeah. That's, that's a, a fail? fail? You, you mean 34? 24. I, I rolled shitty. Yeah, so that's a fail. Okay. Your class, tc has got to be 30. 29, 30, like in that What's range. your class, TC? Uh, I'm assuming 30. That's my, like, that's my spell, DC. Well, I guess we'll live with this answer. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta, it's not, uh, it must be so not. hard to track one character. <laughs> my, my class, DC is 25. Really? Ten plus their yeah. proficiency bonus for the cla- for their clown. Mm. It's it's different for every like. All right, so it's a it's a tweener, but I imagine a fighter. Oh shit! <laughs> oh shit! This could be a real. I know this could. I be, thought it yeah. was your your proficiency plus your ten. ten plus their proficiency bonus for their class DC. For plus three for most first level characters plus the modifier for the class's key ability score. So. Yeah, so you're gonna get a plus five, right? Plus five for strength. And then what's my, what is my proficiency bonus? It's, your it's just level like watching plus, a real game. That's what we do. <laughs> you're level 10, right? Yeah. So it is a minimum of 25. It's probably 27. All right, it so may fail. be 29. Fail. Fail. Okay. Fail. 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 In the history of this network, the number of times I have been crit on 
from an attack of opportunity is yeah. astounding. <laughs> astounding! Yeah. That's, well, you wanted to do something cool, so now you can right. pay for it. So your weapon is now uh, fatal, but it just uses your uh, damage die. So you just add another damage die. Your failure adds another damage die. So oh, however wow. many you were doing. This is awesome. And then I double it. You don't double the you two double fatal damage die. Okay. So t- double the original damage, then add two more die. Nice. Nice. Hell math, yeah. Math, oh, wow. Math, 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 math. Fuck. Thank you, Tom. Thank just, you, just, Tom. Security. <laughs> Take him to the David Sarah room. <laughs> 50 points of damage. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then, okay, so first of all, <laughs> it's my turn. A couple of things are going to happen. <laughs> So I took, with my combat flexibility feat, I used uh, disorienting opening. So when I uh, hit you with an attack of opportunity, you become flat-footed until the start of my next turn. That was an accident. And then. Stop. Stop doing stuff. Sorry. (laughs) Okay, I need you to roll a fortitude save. I already did! For something else. Fuck this game! (laughs) 31. Okay, you're fine. Oh, Can I finish my action? Yes. <laughs> don't ever say a couple things are going to happen again. <laughs> I don't go into Paramus and start correcting people's grammar. <laughs> <laughs> All right. New Jersey has excellent schools. <laughs> As does Massachusetts. All right, this is in your person. Don't ingratiate yourself. <laughs> they have terrible schools. Um, you have like the first in the nation public schools. <laughs> There's a lot of... Do- the doctors move here afterwards. All right, here. This is against your perception, DC. All right. Fuck you. 39. You, you already rolled this and you already beat it. Okay, I did. Sorry. I'm drinking straight vodka. All right, this is what happens. <laughs> <laughs> Critical success on my feint, thanks to my uncanny approach. You are flat-footed against melee attacks uh, that you attempt... Uh, the ally... Uh, until the... You throw your enemy's defenses against you entirely off. The target is flat-footed against melee attacks that you attempt against it until the end of your next turn. So basically this round and the end of the next, assuming I'm still alive. All right, so that was my two-action John, and now I'm going to try and punch you again. Yeah. Because you're flat-footed, and he may deal extra damage if he hits. I think I'm going to do another crit. Here we go. Fuck. (laughs) <laughs> I'm flat-footed and frightened. You're probably going to hit me. All right, but I wanted a crit. It's a 27. You you hit me because of the frightened. Okay. Flat-footed. Wow. Here's what's going to happen. First of all, you're going to take boxcars. Ooh. Uh, so that's 25. 21 points of bludgeoning. Then you're also, because you're flat-footed and he has sneak attack, you're also going to take another six points of sneak attack damage. Woo! Kate, help him with his math. He's not very smart. <laughs> but not until you take your turn. However, he is on fire, so I'll roll my uh, D- uh, no. oh, Natty 19, so he's no longer on fire, but I still will take this damage skin. Two, two points of persistent damage. Two points of persistent fire. All right, so this guy is taking a licking, but he keeps on ticking. Ticking, is that a clue? Is Maybe he clockwork? A, what? What? Who? 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 Eris, you're up. Ugh, so I wish I had more than three actions because what I would love to do is be able to cast haste on Ethel, but I got to use an action to move. Haste is two actions, but I also want to be like, what is this thing's deal? But I can't do all of that. And I think that giving Ethel more power is more worth it because his fortitude saves are really high, all of that. So I'm going to move into the doorway so I can see Ethel and I'm casting haste on you. Nice. So you get extra action. Strike or stride, up to you. Thanks. <laughs> you know I love it when you do that. Um, did you Did you have to touch him to cast this spell? No, it's a 30 foot range. Okay. Yeah, 30, 30 foot range. Asking One for a friend. One minute. Um, and that's my thrilling, awesome, amazing turn. Give it up for Kate Stamus. Yeah! Kate Stamus! in the party. Great turn. Aldo, 
You are up. What do you want to do? Aldo is still like flush up against this guy. He's got his brand new bandolier. He loves his he loves bandoliers much like I do. He's just like, <laughs> oh, no, no, don't fuck off! And he's just gonna keep throwing bombs at him. He's gonna throw a uh, a lightning bomb. Okay. Adam. I that. love that he's like five feet away and yeah. you're, just, you're just smushing bombs like, in his face. Yeah. Like I, a yeah. Tom and Jerry <laughs> cartoon. Well, I think it's like it's it's like an escaping <laughs> ninja. He's just like throwing stuff like down <laughs> at his feet, but it's at his feet. And you're you take a little ninja dip? Yeah, a little. I did. Uh, 30. 30. Well, not only is he uh, flat-footed, but he also has a minus two to his AC from the rage, so that is a hit. Yes! Nice. Awesome. Nice. Okay. And the rage... Doesn't specifically say flat footed, so I'm counting it twice. Okay. Because I can't Great. help but give. Uh okay, that is uh that is another that's 17 points of damage. Ooh. And Ooh. he Ooh. is will be flat footed also until the beginning of my next turn. Okay. If nice. anything. Yeah. Very good, very good. Anything uh, else? Second action, I'm going to throw a dread ampule at him. At his flat footedness. Uh, gosh, that is a 18. <laughs> nope. Five points of splash damage. Gross. Uh, <laughs> gonna throw a. Uh, embarrassing. A... Actually, that was a critical uh, failure, so you wouldn't. He wouldn't take the splash damage. Oh, okay. Right? All right. Unless you have some feet. Okay. Uh, no, I don't. Uh, and then uh, with my last action, I am going to. I. I don't know. Just throw another one. A uh, bomb. Fire bomb. Uh, that is a 23. 23 is a miss. Uh, okay, but that will be that five one. points of splash damage. Yep. All right, see, it's worth it for you to throw that extra one. Yeah. Chip, chip, chipping away. And now it is the thrilling, the one, the only, the murderer. Oh, it's me? Suki. <laughs> All right. It wouldn't uh, surprise me if you said so. I went to my friend's house and they have this thing where we take baby puppies. No! And we take a picture with them and then we kill them! Because you Brooklyn people are weird. No, no, no. And you forget, you're from Massachusetts. Everyone's cheering on Joe. I lived in Massachusetts for two years. Be nice to me. Everyone lived in Massachusetts for two years. <laughs> I Literally in everyone in the world years, lived in Massachusetts. I own a home here. We could commiserate together, and yet you turn everyone against Wait, me? what is that cheer that's happening back? Salem Sid. Salem Sid. Salem Sid. Salem Sid. We had another one that was uh, Commonwealth Kate started Com- over back. Who Kate <laughs> said that? Commonwealth Kate. Wait, wasn't it like kind of Joe? A, it's kind of a mouthful. <laughs> Mash P. Matthew. <laughs> <laughs> Saga skid. <laughs> All right, take a stupid casting. turn. All right, so I am going to cast hydraulic push. Um, I summon water that comes from the earth and it <gasps> flies Hydraulic up. push? And I'm going to slam him with the water. No. And it's supposed to move him five feet if I do well, but fuck it, I'll just slam him against the wall. I don't care. Wow. Ready? Watch nope. this. That was fine. Uh, uh, it's 34 to hit. Where you, uh, that's a hit, but where are you going to push him? Deeper into the wall? Um, no, you're only, it's only on a crit that you're knocked back. I see. Oh, wait, no, I'm sorry. You're knocked back five feet on a success. All right, he just goes, ah, yeah, right into the wall. That's not a door, right? No. No, no. okay, yeah, so he that's just Right south of Ethel is the door. And Ethel opened that door, correct? He sure did, Joe. Let's see. That's going to be 3d6. Chekhov's door. <laughs> so that's only 12 points of damage, but... Okay. Chipping and, away. And what kind of damage? Is water damage? Uh, force. Force damage. Bludgeoning. And then Bludgeoning. I'm going to Physical. command Pepsi again. Fire. Energy. <laughs> Piercing. <laughs> it's force. Water damage is brutal. Which one do you hate the most? <laughs> oh, bludgeoning. I lied. Okay, yeah. I was so confident. Yep. <laughs> and then... <laughs> one character. They have one character. Give it up for Saga Skid, everybody. Yeah, what's up? Skid! Saga Typical small bladder from Saga, am I right? Am I right? 
And then nice. I'm gonna have Pepsi move up and take a chomp. Oh, Nat yeah. 20. Oh. Pepsi! The Watch main out. snake. Oh, do not, Pepsi, do not give Pepsi a fan. What? Why? Yeah. Are you out of your mind? What? what? Pepsi! He's like, uh -uh. who objects? Who objects? Everyone. Yeah. When I write a game, there will be no animal companions. If you think Pepsi should get a crit, say yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well. I hate you guys. They've spoken. Oh, what are you going to do? Eight points of damage instead of four this round? <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> what in the world is this one? Okay. Oh, wait, are we doing this? Yeah, it's are called Lobster this? Bite. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> this one from Alfred Falzoni in Boston. Alfred, Alfred Al. Oh, I guess he, uh, they're at the cask and flagging with... Up a deck, Sarah. Al? No? Okay. Nothing? Fuck Al. All right. <laughs> <laughs> they give me a $100 subscriber. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, deleted. Uh, all right. I was caring for my grandmother in hospice. <laughs> Fuck Alan! <laughs> Come on! All right. <laughs> Pepsi has drawn... Romancing the cum stone. Oh! <laughs> you might want to read this one first before you read it aloud. Roger Cumstone's near inappropriate lethality is stuff of legend. Utilizing that big cum stone energy. In addition to normal crit double damage, you deal 1d6 precision damage to your target, regardless of its creature type. Your target and any of their allies within 10 feet are horrified by your incredible display of violence and must roll a will save. Oh, wow. wow. They could be straight up frightened by your display of violence from your tiny little garter snake. <laughs> <laughs> so that, do I double the added also? Or is that, sorry. Yes. Okay, so that's, fuck. Wait. <laughs> oh I'm no! I'm short circuiting. Sixteen points of piercing damage from Not the bite. Not all of it goes with, through. Plus, plus the one, six. Yeah. Wow. Chris Crow. I just had it. Thanks. Have you ever balanced a checkbook? Five. <laughs> Five. All right. Five. And then a will save, if you please. Me or them? You will save. I how horrifying this garden snake is. I thought <laughs> that your allies had to roll it. No, it's me. You and all your allies, but it's just you. Oh, all right. Shut up. How about a nat 20? You PC lovers. I think As you can mad. imagine, uh, there is no effect. I think okay. they're just mad because I killed two of you last time. Just, just want to say, Pepsi is a boa constrictor, and he's very scary. So maybe you peed your pants a little yep, bit, and that's okay. A boa constrictor, you can just tie to a, an arrow. <laughs> that's right. He was, yeah. he was a baby. He was a baby. The size of the snake changes from episode to episode. <laughs> yeah. I'll have you know. Depending on Sydney's needs, it becomes... I think I've also said he's a ball python, he's a boa constrictor, yeah, and now he's a garden snake. It's fine. All right, so that's what happens to... Yes. Uh, and that, that's your turn, right? That's my turn. All right. Ethel, you're on the ropes a little bit here. Am I? I don't know. No, he's strong. He's strong. Are you strong? I'm yeah. feeling good. Okay. And be, I'm feeling even better because I, because of my bravery ability, Ooh. I should have been reducing those values of the frightened every time. I got them by one, so I'm now no longer frightened. Oh, you did it after the fact. <laughs> yes. Um, okay. So with, I am hasted, so I get an extra action. Nobody so. likes a braggart. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to do some battle medicine on myself. So, yeah. Yeah. Battle medicine? Okay. Okay, and I succeed. So let me give myself, myself a little bit of healing. Great. <laughs> 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 All right. Right. And I'm going to do double slice. <laughs> you did not. No, did you? Get no. off the stage. No, it's not a natural one. Okay, oh. uh, with the Warhammer, 28 to hit. 
with all of his conditions. Wait, how long is your flat-footed last? Mine is over, but Skid is, Skid's is still going. Yeah. All right, so that is not a hit. It's not a hit. Fuck off! Not a hit. All right. Wow. Well, then the other one won't hit either. Let's play a game where everybody wins. <laughs> um, oh, thanks for thanks for selling out the paradise, by the way. <laughs> um, Okay, uh, the hatchet misses as well, and then with my final action, I'm going to attempt to demoralize him. Mm, mm. I'm going to say, you, <laughs> you, get Sorry. away. Yeah, you. there you go. Poop head. Okay, uh, 33 intimidation. Ooh, yeah. 33, and that's against my will DC. That actually is enough to demoralize Whoa. Yeah. All right. 33. Larry. All right, so it that's... Just uh, me, just me. That was Larry Bird's favorite song. Um, <laughs> all right, so I'm frightened one, right? Yes. All right, so he's on the ropes a little bit. You guys are actually starting to do damage, and then finally a demoralizing uh, attempt takes hold, and this guy seems a little shaken. And you notice that as you're starting to strike him, not all of your damage is always going through. It seems like Aldo's is, but the more physical attacks, per se, aren't. However, you do notice that like, as his arm, for example, has been hit, the skin is starting to unravel, and there's nothing underneath. Whoa. So like the strikes oh, wow. into his body that are opening up wounds, they're not bleeding. There's... No there, there. Wow. It's like the credit sequence of Full Metal Alchemist. Yeah. (laughs) That's exactly what it is. Love that show. That's my turn. That's your turn. Hell of a turn. Thank you. Uh, Don't applaud. Atticus, you're up. It's been a long time. Yeah, he's, uh, he's too far out to see any of this stuff, so Atticus is going to... You look gonna... like every kid I went to high school with. Yeah, exactly. right? I know. That's, that's, the, that's where the Boston Joe thing came from, is this fucking look right here. Yeah. That's like, that's how it started. That's what I'm going for. What a piece of trash. <laughs> no, exactly. <laughs> was anyone ever under the impression that Boston Joe wasn't a piece of trash? <laughs> that's exactly what Boston Joe is. Uh, Atticus. Atticus is going to try to get into his uh, into his show zone, and he does a classic uh, trick that he, he's very familiar with, and he's going to and vanish, and he's going to become invisible. Oh. Then he's going to slip through past Eris, past Pepsi, the only one that actually scares him, because he's like, is this snake going to fucking bite me? And he slips past Aldo and Ethel until, where did my guy go? He disappeared. Oh, he disappeared. Look, okay. He's, he's right there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> until he reappears just below Ethel, but he's still invisible. So he slips into that room right next to Ethel. At that moment, a naga emerges from what? the captain's chair. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, God. So That'd he quietly fun, slips into this little corner and doesn't want the guy to know that he's there quite yet, and that's, that's his turn. You have entered the study of death. <laughs> <laughs> All right, top of round three. Okay. It is old Myacne and Mun, question marks, turn. Father. <gasps> Ethel, you are still flat-footed till the end of his turn here. I know. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna focus my attention on you. I'm not trying to pick on you. You're just the weakest. So here we go. Fist. He's just punch, punch, punch. Oh, natty nineteen trickled to a natty three. Oh. So that's gonna be a twenty-six to hit. Miss. Yes. Nice. Yes, Ethel. Nice. Yeah. Fuck. All right, I'm going to punch you again. Ah, oh, you want some of the sauce? How about this? Uh, 30. Hit. Let's go. With the sneak attack. John on top. Fuck. All right, 14 points of bludge. You got and this. And then dude. another nine of precise. You got this. Okay. All right. 14 plus nine. And I'm going to take my third action to punch you again. <laughs> How's that for looking, by the way? Uh, he's hurt. Yeah. I'm gonna roll it in front of Boston Joe. Oh! Touch of law. That natural 11. All right, 11 plus 15 is 26. Miss. Come on! Yeah, baby! You're cheating! You're sitting up here and you're lying about your AC. AC 27. 
Kate, Kate, what's my AC? This is it. This is the final round. That you are fake Myacnian Muns. I am going to go to another rock club and run another game for people I like. (laughs) (laughs) Are there people you like? I'm going to the Wang Center to play a real game. (laughs) (laughs) We would not sell out the Wang Center. (laughs) They would be very disappointed. All right, that's my turn. I hate you guys. It is Eris's turn. Eris, I feel like I haven't talked to you in an hour. Um, all right, now that I'm in the doorway and I can see everything that's going on and I see us hitting, quote unquote, my acne and mun yep. and all this nothingness yep. happening, can I roll some sort of knowledge check, maybe occultism, to maybe understand more what's going on? I specifically want to know weaknesses, maybe? Yeah, and here's what we're going to do. I'm going to have you roll it, and based on the success, we'll have Joe read the results. <laughs> so go ahead. And if he, I'm going to let him really go wild, and I'm going to give him like a one minute timer to give you all the information. Joe, what do you think about that? So go ahead yeah, and roll, I, and I'll I tell you. I got that. <laughs> Sounds like he's got it. Sick. No sweat. Here we go. Come on. Come, Come on. on. Come on. All right, give me that John. Give me that John. Um, all right, I'm so sick of rolling like shit. I've got two bottle caps right now, and I roll a natural eight. I'm rolling it again. Okay, I sure. I want to know what's going on. I'm Go sorry. For it. Go for it. Fuck! <laughs> Can I just take the better one that I rolled? No. No? <laughs> no, 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 you can't. 25. 25. Ooh. You know what? That might be enough to gain some information. Joe, how much information should she gain from that, I have a timer set. Uh, I'm gonna give him 33 seconds for the great Larry Bird. I think she should get at least one weakness. Oh, that's a good uh, that's a good point. Let's see how old Bladder O'Brien. If he just sits, <laughs> if he sits down before this gets to 33 seconds, you simply will know he will not. 26, 27. Should I roll his dice? This, this is the best idea for 20, filling dead air we've ever <laughs> had. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. It doesn't so need sorry. to be this way. It doesn't need to be this Here's way. Here's what you know. He does sneak attack damage. So you better watch out for that. Why are you doing this to me, question mark? <laughs> All right, I'll tell you a little bit more. He has resistance physical five. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. I try to share that. Oh, hey, Joe, welcome back. I've only been in hell since you left. They noticed. <laughs> <laughs> I did a really good impression of you. You should listen to it later. It was uncanny. I, it I was had great. to look. I was like, what? It was great. Um, so I yelled that over my acneans head, like, hey, Ethel, you're doing great. Love the enthusiasm. He seems to have a resistance. Sorry, babe. <laughs> um, and then... Because I saw maybe he might have lower will save, I'm gonna cast Phantasmal Killer. Oh, oh man. So roll the will wow. save. Wow. Or no. All right. It's a saving oh. throw. Whoa. Oh, oh no, it's happening now. <laughs> the killer is here. The killer is here among us. <laughs> the call Danny is coming from Sarah. inside the Paradise Rock Club. <laughs> yeah. Phantom uh-huh. of the Paradise. <laughs> All right, uh, what do I have to do? Or do you do something? Roll a will save. Roll a will save? Okay, 27. Ooh, that's a fail! Oh! What? What? Oh, I don't have this many D6. Oh, what am I going to do? First of all, you're frightened too. Oh! Nice. Because you failed. I was already frightened one. All right, so I'll be frightened two now. I guess it stacks, so you're frightened. (laughs) Oh, maybe it's it's stacks. What do you all think? Do we want to change the rules since we're playing pretend and having fun? When you... <laughs> How dare you. <laughs> He's frightened too! God. Commonwealth Kate. Is this, is this Boston Kate? <laughs> Commonwealth Kate. Boston Kate. Boston Kate. Boston Kate. I love this place. Ingrates. <laughs> all of you. Um, all right, so that damage. Right, 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 right. <laughs> Let's see. You take 26 points of damage. Oh, yeah, all right. Hot damn. Pew, pew, pew. And uh, that's my turn. I don't care for it. Nice. 
Woo! Mental that was mental damage for the record. Mental damage. Mental yeah. damage. Oh, 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 he's getting blasted by mental damage. Menthol damage. By menthol damage. By menthol damage. <laughs> oh, stop smoking those cools. So minty. So fresh. Uh, all right, yeah, I am. Uh, I can take that. Okay, it is Aldo's turn. Aldo, your friends are teaming up on this dude, taking him out. All right, Aldo is uh, heartened by the success of his friends, and he's just like, looks like your hour is up, fake man! And he's gonna throw a uh, lightning bomb at his feet. Fucking fuck! Uh, That is a 22 to hit. No, uh, but it is not a uh, failure, critical failure. All right, so that's a five points of splash damage. That's up. I'm going to throw another one at his feet. You dropped the bomb on him. That is uh, is a 16 to hit. That is a critical failure. Rolling like fucking garbage. Oh, no. What what the hell? Throw another one. Wait, wait, wait. You're sure. Frightened three, flat-footed. Mm-hmm, That's mm-hmm. still a mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Damn. I don't like your tone either. I was just double checking. Just doing an accounting. Turn your hat around. <laughs> nah, bro. You would get beat up by a BU nerd tonight. Uh, that is a 24 to hit on the last one. No, poop salad. But that okay. will actually give five but points. Five, five points. Yeah. All right, so Aldo is just... He's so far away from the enemy. He can barely see him. I know. <laughs> Just relentlessly chucking bombs so, at the wall so directly. So fucking by. absurd. It's a, it's a silly thing we but do. But like each time, like one of them explodes, there's this like, this boom, this like sonic boom, like the blue angels are flying overhead. Like right. every time, it's like, boom, <laughs> boom, boom. Suki and Pepsi. Suki. Uh, all right. Suki. Suki. <laughs> Little fadeaway Suki jump. <laughs> Suki. Oh yeah. <laughs> that Nothing is... makes me laugh more than that fucking song. Like. <laughs> 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 I should John mention. Uh, everybody knows Francis from uh, Getting the Trunk, right? Francis. Yeah. Right? Francis. Crazy. Francis is shooting the show tonight. Yeah, there you go. and CJ. Is it actually Ow! the entire team from the new Glass Cannon 2.0 is here. Is here yeah, tonight. The whole, yes. the whole crew. That's how Everybody. we do. Started from the bottom, now Woo! we're here. Matt Brody. Matt's right there. Yes. Hi, Matt. Matt. Our, and the reason I bring that up is because I'm sure he laughed at that round ball rock drop. <laughs> Uh, whose turn is it? Suki. Suki! All right, Suki dribbles in, uh, yeah. goes for a layup, stands behind Pepsi. She is going to fire her electric arc, heightened to fifth level at Mun, and she, it's, it's a, oh, fuck, it's a reflex. I thought it was a, well, that's fine. Great, he's, he's frightened three. Yeah, it's reflex, great. reflex yeah, save. Reflex save. Reflex save, frightened three. That's gonna be a minus three to his reflex, John. What are you scared? 29. Tits. Uh, that Inappropriate. is a success. There are yeah. children here. There, there are drunk, there there are drunk children here. <laughs> How dare you? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. There you go. There you go. 13 points. Oh, 13, 14, 15 points of electricity. Seven. Seven points. Half of that. Thank you, Joe. Uh, Seven wah, points wah. of electricity. And then... And how's he looking? Fine? Great. Great. <laughs> nice. And then... Nice. I have though, more. I have so many songs for failure. It's, it's perfect. <laughs> oh, that's me. Oh, I feel that in my wiener. <laughs> I took my three actions, but because I took that new feat, Mature Animal Companion, right. Pepsi gets a bite off, even though I didn't command oh, him to yeah, do that. Oh, yeah, buff that loser. <laughs> the loser who crit on you. Oh, a snap. Oh, man. Ooh. So close to doing it again. Snakes Natural got... 18. Oh. That's going to be, what's his jaws? For, uh, 24 to hit. Oh, oh yes. Yeah. Oh, wait, no. 
You didn't add that up right. Yeah. 34, 34 to hit. 34 to hit. 34 to hit is a hit. Yeah, buddy. Yeah. 12 points of piercing damage. 14 points of piercing damage. <laughs> I'm bad at math, but I rolled a six and a two. Why are you going to go into this right now? (laughs) Because you're correcting me in your role. I'm not correcting you. Ooh, math fight. Math fight. Nerd! What's six plus two? All right, yeah, 12. Looks like a couple of students from MIT came up on stage <laughs> to have a good old-fashioned math fight. Is Anybody he here from Boston? <laughs> All right. Is Ethel. he dead? It's Ethel's turn. No, okay. stop. Stop playing your crappy character for a moment. <laughs> Ethel, you're up. You All have right. had a rough day. I've had a rough day. To say the least. You have that faint taste of Jägermeister on your lips. <laughs> <laughs> and no memory of how it got there. Must have happened to the dreamlands, you think to yourself. But you look over at my acne and mun, a person you're still trying to remember, like maybe on the boat they had mentioned, oh, we found these receipts. You don't still know, you don't really know who he is, but you know he's got to go. It's your turn. Double slice. Okay, okay, okay. That's the best I've rolled all night. Um, okay, so that not, is not saying much. That's, not, <laughs> <laughs> that's a thirty-nine hit on the warhammer. Hit and, yes. a, and a twenty-eight on the hatchet. Hit. Yeah. So that's a crit. What crit? Is, is the, the twi- is the, critical the, critical the thirty-nine critical is a crit. Critical well, let me ask you this. Does, critical 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 I tried to look this up, and I moved on with my life. Does frightened lower AC? Yeah. Yes. yes. Then yes, that is a crit. Yeah. Yes. All right, give me a fortitude save while I roll my damage. <laughs> the natural three fail. Oh. Oh. Okay. All right. A couple things are gonna happen. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Thirty-two points of damage from the warhammer. He's dead. Shut yeah! up. <laughs> Francis, stop clapping! <laughs> Motherfucker. <laughs> Friends like these, huh? The lights came up, and I just saw Francis. <laughs> You son of a bitch. <laughs> this guy hits the floor and like unravels like, uh, imagine a mummy, right? All of its folds of cloth, the cloth start to fall and there's no, there's nothing underneath. He's completely hollow on the inside. And Ethel just continues to pound with the hammer against the empty, the open rags on the floor. It's like, <laughs> Muscles bulging, sweat pouring. It's, it's kind, of, kind hot. of hot. It's kind of hot. <laughs> I, and he's like, I mean, I would say I stop, but when she goes up to stop you, here. <laughs> she goes up to stop you and then, and then sees and does not stop you. <laughs> Eventually, he stops of his own accord and he looks up and he's like, I got your note. <laughs> <laughs> That's a bottle cap. That's a bottle cap. That's how you earn them. That's how you earn them. You just have to be brilliant, and you're in a bottle cap. <laughs> I got your note. I mean, we will laugh about that the rest of the trip home. <laughs> Good job, Matt. <laughs> I got your <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's good. That's good. <laughs> All right, what do you do? Uh, <laughs> I, I had a, the weirdest dream. <laughs> <laughs> we were fighting that tree thing. 
And then all of a sudden, I wasn't there with the tree thing anymore. And I was in my wife's attorney's office. <laughs> my wife was there, and her attorney was there, and I was representing myself. <laughs> and pro say, can you see? <laughs> it was so strange. Every time they, they, would, they would say something to me, and I could just feel my, my life and my marriage and my love and my children slipping away from me. And every time they said something, I just, I don't know, I wanted to get too graphic, but it was like more shit. <laughs> it was like soaking through my clothes. But then you were there. <laughs> what, 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 me? You were there. And you started to, you would like wipe my brow. What was I wearing? <laughs> Uh, I guess this. <laughs> what you wearing now, I guess. Like, yeah, I always wear this. Okay. Yeah, what you've been wearing the entire time I've known We're like you. cartoon like, characters. We never change. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Bart Simpson always in the red and blue. <laughs> I don't know. It was just a, you were uh, you you wiped my brow, and then you you you, you patted me on the head. And as I felt my everything I've ever known and loved slip away from me, I thought maybe things would be okay. Aww. But then I woke up in the hotel room and I don't want to talk about that. It's <laughs> <laughs> for the best. All I'm going to say is don't worry about it. I've, I've cleaned up the mess. <laughs> yeah, he's like covered and still covered in blood from this when he showed up. No one... They don't, if they search the if they search the hotel room, they won't find it. <laughs> it's, it's covered in blood and mop shards. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, how are you guys? I've been better. Atticus has uh, become visible again, and during Ethel's whole uh, dream speech to Eris, he's kneeling down on the remains of this husk and it's still there it doesn't like vanish right it's just yeah like no this... it, it like it unravels like a paper mache man yeah so he like wide-eyed is just grabbing the pieces and like pulling it up and trying to run his hands so i'm gonna do a an occultism recall knowledge to see if sure. i can how do how does one make one of these mm -hmm. uh okay uh, that is a 32 all right so this is a creature known as a hollow one um, a they, hollow one. They are constructs that are made to resemble humans. Um, it is. Uh, are a, they made to resemble a human you want them to resemble, or to resemble like the creator? You could make them in your own image. You can make them any way you want. Any way you Maybe want. you could just make a friend. Uh, <laughs> is it is it sentient? <laughs> Uh, yes, I mean you. You spoke to him, and it seemed to have it's memories own and own thoughts, um, and a father. Perhaps when it's and said, father, yeah. I mean, this said, is something father. that is often done by alchemists, and so I imagine uh, Aldo. At some point in your training, this may have been something that you read about. I made the the reference to Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, but I mean, there is a sense of like maybe this is one of those things that's kind of the forbidden. For, for, forbidden tome of al alchemists, like yeah. the code. You're not really supposed to do this. No, this is bad. This is bad juju making a hollow one. Also, everyone should watch Full Metal Alchemist Brothers. It's yeah. <laughs> so good. It's yeah. really fucking good. But it is like the opening with him and his brother. The it's it's literally that. I it's mean, the same. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Edward. <laughs> That fucked me up. I learned the That's entire... why I don't watch it. Like, you constantly talk about how great it is, and so does Sydney. Yeah. And every time, you're both like, but it is so messed up. <laughs> yeah. And I couldn't stop. I couldn't sleep for days. I'm, like, I'm not going to watch that. But yeah, basically, the connection here is like, I think this would be one of those things that is like a taboo. You don't, you don't create life. Even though this isn't, isn't really life, it is a construct. Um, it is still meant to like sort of mimic life, and it had its own mind. It d it took mental damage. Um, Sydney, I see you prepping a roll there. Yeah, I'm just getting ready for when you're done. 
<laughs> Are you through? What do you got cooking over there? A little perception check? No, I was going to treat wounds on Ethel. Okay. Well, I'll stop. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ethel will pick up the pants, the, the, the empty, hollowed pants that fell to the floor. And uh, the I shirt. I have to ask, why? Because <laughs> <laughs> he's going to change out of his shit and blood covered clothing. Wait, are you going to put on the hollow one's clothing? <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> Angeline, we know what next month's poster is going to be. <laughs> so he strips, he strips down to his underwear, and then they're pretty soiled, too. So he, he, he stands behind the chair. And he, that was a previous condition. <laughs> <laughs> and he changes into this guy's clothes. Wow. Okay, so you wow. kind of sneak outside. You feel maybe. so at home around us. Just I know. Like maybe stripping. Eris catches a sideways glance of your piece. <laughs> <laughs> What would you say you're packing there, Ethel? <laughs> Six, know. seven? Penis E? Penis E? Penis D. Penis D. Genitals D. Genitals D. Man, there are very... It's a genitals D if I've ever seen one. I imagine Ethel's got a nice little piece. <laughs> and maybe you catch a sideways glance at his situation. <laughs> We're such children. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. We're all going to die. <laughs> okay. Uh, Sorry. I did treat wounds. Uh, you get 19 back for Ethel. Oh. You get 37 for... Because uh, I did DC 30. or D, Yeah, DC 30 for that. So 30 hit points plus what I roll on my D8. Uh-huh. You get 37. And then Eris, you get 42. Holy shit. Wow. Oh, wow. Holy crap. And then, Aldo, are you down? Well, yes. Well, let's just be aware here that this is 10 minutes a pop. 10 minutes a pop. So now we're, we're in this lobby for like 40 minutes. Okay, we've been doing... Th- Let I me think- talk to you about this vestibule. Yeah. Uh, okay. So we're barged searching in around. and like yeah. jumped into a fight. Um, it's actually kind of cozy in here. There is a carved wooden coat rack that is stopped, uh, topped rather with stuffed sturges. If you guys remember from Feast oh, of Ravenmore, yeah. Yeah. like giant fucking mosquitoes. Ambushes! Uh, They're a delicacy, aren't they? Yep, call back. Several fine garments hang on the coat rack, suggesting that their wearer is a gentleman of some standing. They are fancy clothes. (laughs) Oh, I I put those clothes on. (laughs) Oh, yeah. (laughs) You didn't search the room. You just started taking his soiled clothes. (laughs) There are numerous fancy bottles, strange alchemical objects, and a hefty cudgel sitting on a recessed shelf. Uh, and then directly opposite the door is a portrait of the man who answered the door. It's in his 50s, neat blonde hair, immaculate attire. And he's just kind of like this. <laughs> and a, a chemical scent fills the air. Aldo, you notice it first, and then everyone else kind of smells, smells it. It's like, oh, wow. That's like, you know when you're near a pool? Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of like that. Can I do an alchemical lore to Fuck identify yeah, that scent? Uh, that is a 34. 34. There must be an alchemical lab nearby. Uh, there's an alchemical lab nearby. Um, can I inspect the cudgel? Yes, yes. You want to roll on that? Sure. Can I roll, uh, I don't know, athletics? What we yeah, no, yeah. Athletics sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> That's a 37. Oh, good roll. Oh, I'm sorry, 35. 35. 30, oh, 35? <laughs> You're fucked. There's no way. No, no, that's succeed. still good. Uh, it is a wooden cudgel. Is with it, no it other properties of interest. Can it be used as a weapon? Yeah, it's a cudgel. Yeah. <laughs> it's literally the only reason one would own a cudgel. Can this gun be used as a weapon? <laughs> like, I'd like to play badminton, yeah. but today I'd like to use my cudgel. <laughs> <laughs> well, who builds a cudgel out of wood? That's just weird. Well, I didn't know what that was, so I looked up cudgel, and cudgel literally is a, a short, thick stick used as a weapon. So made like, of it's wood. made of wood. Uh, Eris stuffs the cudgel down his pants to increase his bulge. Don't play my player. Not Eris, Ethel. So she stuffs the cudgel down your pants. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I meant Ethel. Uh, yeah, no, it's a cudgel. This is a, a beat stick. 
A peach stick. I'm adding it to my... What are you, in a cargo cult or something? It's... I specialize in hammers. <laughs> um, uh, Atticus will detect magic on the immediate area, just to, if there's presence or absence of magic in the two rooms. Uh, yes, you. You notice that uh, there is a an aura of magic coming from one of the pockets of the coats that's hanging on the oh. coat rack. He starts walking to the coat rack slowly. Puts a little rat hand up to it. Coat rack, Joe. No, no. He starts rooting. Can't just... He can't just think, make up chance. I think they might serve alcohol in this establishment. <laughs> Be sure to tip your bartender. He starts rooting through the pockets of the jackets. All right, you start rooting through the pockets of the jackets. You, you immediately find... This rat. You feel a couple coins, you dirty rat. Uh, three gold pieces, you find, in fact. You shove them into your little tuxedo. You find a small clay pipe, perhaps a crack pipe. Oh, Yeah. An artisanal yeah. crack. Be careful, Sydney's gonna take it yeah. and start smoking it. You find an artisanal crack pipe. <laughs> <laughs> I prefer my crack pipes handmade. I mean, it's, the, it's honestly the nicest crack yeah, pipe. Oh my god, it's such a nice crack pipe. I've, I've seen a lot of crack pipes. Lot. This is really nice. He, lo- he looks at the big <laughs> portrait and he just goes. <laughs> Nice work. Is the crack pipe magical? <laughs> no. <laughs> Just you wait. Yeah. <laughs> Not until you put something in it. <laughs> then you also find the source of the magical aura, a silver stoppered potion. Ooh. Ooh. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, I'd like to attempt to identify it. What is it, Atticus? <laughs> Atticus and, uh, is like... I don't know yet. <laughs> Give me ten minutes. Uh, I'll roll Arcana to try okay. to identify uh, the item. That is a twenty-nine. That's a potion of invisibility. Oh. Oh. Of course, he would recognize this. He like tilts it up against the light. He's like, "Oh yes, little uh, potion that would be used by those not so capable." Um, perhaps one of you would like its invisibility. And he hands it out uh, to whomever would like to take it. Oh. Uh, drink this, and you'll vanish for ten minutes. I think Ethel should take it, because I would very much like to not see him. <laughs> you, you turn around, and Ethel is putting on the really nice coat. <laughs> <He's> like, what? <laughs> <laughs> um, I have one, actually. So if Yeah, so else... perhaps... Yes. And he yeah. hands it to Suki. To give to Pepsi. To yes. give to Suki Pepsi. Suki immediately pops it and pours it in Pepsi's mouth. Oh, good. The snake's gone. Thank you so much. No, no, no. T- oh. Watch, watch, watch. He's no, I'll gone. hand you the potion and say. He's gone. <laughs> hey, Suki, where's Pepsi? <laughs> gone. <laughs> No, I don't do that. Suki just takes it and puts it up her sleeve and then it like disappears and somewhere into her dress. Thank you, Atticus. I'm sure I'll remember I have that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll write myself an email that I, I got really a potion <laughs> of invisibility. <laughs> Cur- currently doing that. <laughs> uh, uh, anything else in either of these rooms? All right, so let's talk about the room to the south that Ethel so rudely barged into. I just uh, opened a door. It is, uh, like I said, a study. There's, there's all these old maps hanging on the wall. Two comfortable leather captain's chairs uh, drawn up to a curious uh, table that looks to be made from a small preserved owl bear. Uh, GCN owl bear T-shirts Whoa. available at the merch stand, by the way. Wow. <laughs> there is a decanter half full of red liquid in a leather case lying on this bizarre looking table. Yeah. And there's a, uh, is there a fucking door in here? Yeah, right behind Atticus. Behind Atticus, yeah. And there's a door right to the north of Urus. I hand the decanter to Atticus in case it's anything more than wine and I'll inspect the, re- the leather case. All right. 
Uh, you hand the decanter <laughs> to Atticus. You, ex- <laughs> you hand it back to me. His hands it back to you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you open up the leather case, and it contains seven crystal goblets that are worth, I can tell you, 25 silver pieces each. Oh, nice. If you want to just steal from this person. Yeah, like we're just robbing this guy. <laughs> oh, this is a straight-up home invasion at this point. We're just, like, robbing this guy. Yeah, we take it. <laughs> like, Everybody roll a uh, perception check. Everybody. Uh, 30 for Atticus. 26 for Eldar. 33 for Ethel. 29 for Eris. 34 okay. for Suki. Damn. All right, so literally everybody, as you start to come, I imagine you're walking in, like, oh, can I see that room coming in and out? So all of you get a look at it. You, you start to look at the maps, and uh, you notice that one appears to be missing. Like, there, there's a place for a map, and there's like a faint uh, sort of, you know, uh, you know when you like have a hang a picture for a long time and take it off, you can tell that something else used to be there. You see that uh, one of the maps had been removed recently um and you rolled a what a 30 30 uh ethel had a 33 i think and suki had a 34 Mm -hmm. 34 all right so suki if you're looking around and kind of peering you also notice a scroll that is uh taped to the back of one of the maps oh magical scroll yeah maybe she's like feeling that spot that was missing and then she feels a bump and she peels it and pulls it out from behind it can i tell what it is uh, you have to roll an arcana check. I can do this. She says to herself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little self-affirmation before she... That's a 29. It's a scroll of Ray's dead. Oh, oh. shit. Whoa. Wow. I think she immediately is like, oh, oh, alto. Yeah. What you were saying before about this entity, I think perhaps Mun is doing something far more dangerous. He had this taped behind one of the maps. It's a scroll of Ray's dead. Well, yes. I mean, I, I don't think we should carry the comparison to Full Metal Alchemist too far, <laughs> because this is something that can be done in the Pathfinder universe but what without if many repercussions. To bring back his mother and. No, I know, but. Just I hope he doesn't turn so his brother into a robot or anything sad. else with it. But he's gonna fuck it up! I know. Well, yes, you're right. Spoilers. I, sorry. <laughs> it happens, like, in the first episode. Anyway. Yes, first episode. It's a fucking show. Like we said, it's a messed up uh, show. <laughs> no, this is... This is, uh... Why would he store? This is something of great value. You're gonna type it up behind a... Uh, I tear down the other maps. I wonder if there's other ones. You start tearing down the other maps. They're 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 depicting various regions of the in, inner sea. Uh, two of them are actually quite old and fine. Maybe someone less of a savage than you would be like, "Hey, hey, stop! Hold hold off! Those are old maps, and they're nice." <laughs> uh, oh, actually, can I do before we do that? Can I do because I have uh, geography lore? Yeah. Ooh. Can I do just to, like to see how valuable they might be? Or, like, yeah, what sure, they for sure. Uh, Thirty. 30. Okay, so there's two maps in particular, one of Ustalav and one of Osirian, uh, that are like quite old, fancy, fine. They might be, you could actually resell them if you wanted to continue to steal from this man while he's of course. not in this room. Um, but uh, yeah, the other ones look the kind right. you get at a bus stop. All right. All right, I'm going to grab the two that are worthwhile and okay. take them. And I'll tell you, they're worth 75 silver pieces each. Nice. The table is fa- fancy too, but it's not like you guys have a way to carry that table out of there. No. And the, you, you turn uh, around and Ethel has loaded the table onto his back. <laughs> <laughs> Just has a, an owl bear corpse on his back. <laughs> the decanter is made of an exquisitely etched crystal containing a superb vintage of red wine, a rare Talden style. Oh. I imagine back in the day, Atticus, you could have only have dreamed to drink. Yeah. You'd have to be invited to somebody much richer's place to have wine of this nature. But he's like, Ethel, put down the table. We're not here to loot the place. Yes, we are! No. We need to find the master of the house. He starts looking up and kill around. Him? And kill him and loot him. 
And take his stuff? Take it, yeah, take yes. the deed to the home itself. Sell the land. <laughs> Real estate is at a premium right now. We can really clean up. There's a, howdy, there's a housing shortage. Well, there is a huge housing shortage. We're gonna... There's another door in the foyer. Perhaps we should go through that door before entering further. Ethel hurls the owlbear table through it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Super <laughs> ducks. <laughs> which, which way are you going to the door to the north, just north of Eris? Go to the door! <laughs> or the door to the west of Atticus? Where did you throw that fake table? The door of the. I mean, I'm in that room, so the door of the west. Yeah, that makes sense. The door to the west! The door, door to, to the west! Uh, A- Atticus is not there, for the record. Uh. Is it because you're afraid of being hit by the table? right now. (laughs) All right, so Atticus moves out of the way just as Ethel throws a towel, uh, an owl bear table at this door. And you open up. (laughs) Fucking dummy. You open up. Ethel's been through a little bit of an experience. (laughs) He's he's in a state right now. He's like, like, ah! (laughs) Sorry. He's had a rough day. Everyone okay? (laughs) All right, so you open up into this next room. Uh, and this is an interesting little room here. I'm actually going to show you more of the John. Oh, whoa, oh. whoa. It's a very big room. Wow. Yeah. Very, yeah. That's a much bigger John than what I was expecting. <laughs> Judge me by my size, do you? <laughs> it's a good looking room. Pretty solid piece. It has an <laughs> odd <laughs> opening. <laughs> In the center of the floor, though there's a series of worn handrails that sort of prevent careless falls to the ground below. So you just see this hole in the center of the room, and there's these like rickety old handrails protecting you from just falling right into the center. But the chamber here above is filled with books and all sorts of intriguing objects. They seem to be all of a medical nature. Um, There is a what looks like a staircase to the north that leads up and then just across from where you fired that owl bear taxidermy into the room uh, there is a single door uh, like on the southern end of this room that faces you leading into what you would imagine would be a pretty small room based on the uh, dimensions of the home a closet um, perhaps yeah let's check the let's Ethel, check the, the small Ethel, open it I open it after you open it, and there is uh, what looks like a small, uh, it's like a velvet and mahogany lined chamber that contains a brass chain and pulley hoist elevator. So like the type of elevator, it looks like it only goes down that you have to like pull yourself. Like a dumb, like a dumb waiter. waiter? I'm talking to Matthew. And, uh, like a dumbwaiter? Yeah, like a dumbwaiter. <laughs> it's really perceptive. Thanks, Troy. It's not. Yeah. You look like a dumbwaiter. Good, Good job, Matthew. Matthew, Good job. Matthew, you have the guys. Yeah. Let's hear it for Matthew for coming up with a really great question all on his own without any fucking help. Every time, man. It's good to be back. The yeah. clockwork. It's good to be back. Uh, you know, it's a beautiful look. Like, everything in this house is very pristine. Obviously, uh, Mon, if he really does live here, has some money. But you do notice there are some mold splotches running along the lower parts of the oh, velvet wall. that's going to lower the value. Covering. <laughs> oh. Yeah. <laughs> that's, okay. Unless you don't get an inspection, you'll be Let's fine. Take so like, that into account when we're so like black doing our mold or just check. like mildew? It's kind of like a mildewy greenish mold. Oh, okay. It'll be fine. We It'll can resell. Yeah, as long as it's not black mold. Let's get some box fans in here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I should see some fans. Uh, but yeah, there's a lot, a lot in this room here. All right. Um, can we uh, search right, I'm gonna, this room? Yeah, roll a seek on the room. Yeah, I'm going to do a seek. perception as well. Perception. Uh, 29. Okay, what are you looking for in particular? Just kind of... I'm looking through the books. Valuable stuff. Yeah, to see if there's anything uh, of the ilk of Lau's collections. It's also uh, socks. You need some socks. Yeah, the so one thing he's missing right now is... Um, <laughs> the worn books that seem to be lining the room shelves are reference works, for the most part. Most of which are about the creation of constructs, 
like you just fought, uh, and other alchemical experiments involving flesh and bone. Ooh. Uh, you imagine you could make a pretty penny if you stole every book here, because this might be the kind of books that they like burn in the town square. No, you're not supposed to do this type of alchemy. Uh, but I, I can't imagine you have the capability, so I don't know why they wrote the value of all these books in the adventure. <laughs> it's 250 pounds worth of books. Jeez. What's the value? 900 silver pieces. But Let's spend a day. I can't. <laughs> I'll go get an ox cart. Just load them out. Yeah. I'll tell you this. In addition, there are also enough alchemical tools and supplies in this room to count as two complete alchemist labs. If you oh. wanted to gather them all up, Aldo. I imagine yeah, I think, I think Aldo is like his is salivating at all this. He's just like, oh, this is... Wonderful that I haven't had this kind of equipment since I came to this strange alien world. What? Uh, never mind. And he's gonna, <laughs> yeah, like he's like gathering like little beakers and like flasks and Start stuff. And gathering like, oh, all this shit. Nice. Yeah. Put in your pocket and you see something that like you've only read about. And you've always, I imagine you've always wanted to have one, but maybe you never had the coin in which to do so. And you pull it off the shelf. It's something known as a hybridization funnel. Oh, what? It allows you to mix two alchemical splash weapons into a single flask. Oh, wait! Whoa. Wait! 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 No. Wait? Yeah. Right now it only exists in 1E, but I'll send you the 2E specs. Oh, sweet. Okay. ASAP. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, you keep looking at the books and everything, uh, Atticus and your best friend Suki. You also find a straw-lined wine crate that has like a stamp on it that says Product of Taldor, and it contains 11 bottles of the same fine vintage uh, that you found in the decanter in the other room. room uh, wow. A nice Dornish red. Oh, this is good. Ethel picks it up and hurls it through the next no, door. It shatters. No. Red wine goes everywhere. Starts seeping into the floor below. Ethel, you monster. You find a wooden case that's nailed shut that has all these alchemical symbols on it. I'm just going to say you fucking crowbar it open. There are 12 vials of alchemist fire inside Whoa. and 12 vials of acid. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Wow. There's a shelf in a, uh, resting on a shelf in a glass leech bowl with gold tongs depicting frolicking vampires next to a purse that has been made out of a small taxidermic cat. You find 280 silver pieces and two tourmalines of high quality worth 125 silver pieces each, as well as four chunks of cloudy amber worth five silver pieces each. Yeah. Wow. This is the most like loot we've ever found in this campaign. Yeah. Oh, we spent an entire book in our dreams. We, that's yeah. true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we, got, we did find nice some amazing some tactile shit. You couldn't keep any of that. Suki takes the cat purse and tucks it into her robe and hopes no one else sees it. What, what, <laughs> what are you doing? What? Su- Suki. Uh, there's, um, I believe this is tourmaline and no, uh, no, cloudy no, no. amber. What was that? What was what? Did you put in your robes? Nothing. Suki. <laughs> Suki. Roll off de- deception. <laughs> I roll a deception. <laughs> you making up rules? <laughs> <laughs> no, I. This it's is against my perception yeah. DC. Yeah, I'm rolling deception. Yeah, what'd you get? Twenty three. Fail. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so you see her shoving coins into her purse. No, Suki, no, the cat. no, it's the Suki cat. takes. Oh, the, the cat. Taxidermy cat purse back out. I've never seen something like it. I just wanted. We are not here to rob this man. I know. You turn. You turn around. Ethel is stuffing little knickknacks into his pockets. Yeah, like, yeah we're all just like <laughs> pulling stuff off the what walls. Aldo, that's a really cool purse. I would try to take it too. I think you should take it. As soon as, soon as Atticus turns back and is like, "What are you doing?" Suki just puts it back in her. <laughs> <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.
<laughs> it seems we are all playing a different game. <laughs> Suki feels bad. She feels bad for the animal. She wants to go bury it properly. She wants to give it like. She wants to give a funeral well, for just the purse. Say that. Yeah. <laughs> Don't be like, I like it. <laughs> I've just never seen one she like said, this. She says to Atticus, I'd like to, to properly dispose of it. It's wrong that they've kept it here in this form. Well, Atticus is a rat. This is a representation of your mortal enemy. Exactly. It's a cat. Oh, do you not like this? What, do you adore it so? You worship cats? No, no, I don't worship cats. I just think it's wrong. If you were taxidermied up on a shelf, I would pull you down too. And I was once frozen in amber for an entire season. <laughs> <laughs> I know the feeling. Suki looks heartbroken. Oh my gosh. Yes. I didn't know that. It was Christmas time. I, do- <laughs> I don't know what that is. <laughs> well, suffice to say, it is a divine time and it was horrible. <laughs> we need to find Mun. Well, hold Stop. on. Stop. Ethel! Oh. <laughs> you got your hands literally in your pocket. <laughs> Just focus, please. Troy. No, you're like, you're something break for like pulling a painting off. I'm the trying wall. to pull a painting yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, Crashes down. <laughs> I thought it was in my contract that I could keep what I found. <laughs> yes, once the house is clear, yes. Troy, question. With yes. That, with that perception check, just on the map, is, th- is this anything that's north of Suki? It almost looks like a switch on the ground. Is that like something or is that just on the map? Um, where are you looking? The that lever on there? That's uh, just like either lever. side of the door? That's just a little decoration. Okay. It's a little Davy Maps flavor. That's the cat purse. I right, pick it up. That's right. no, that's not the um, good. We'll do what you must. But. While you all are looking at your books, um, I take egg and I go, go off, little one. And while he, egg is walking around, like I want to look into this pit because the pit seems cool. But egg is going to use his familiar ability, soul sight, and he gains a life sense with a range of thirty feet. Oh. oh. So just as Egg is walking around, I'm also imagining it permeates at all directions, the 30 yep. feet. It sure does. So it maybe permeates if there's an upstairs or a downstairs. Yes. Yeah. You know what? I'll, I'll imagine that too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I see it. I see it perfectly. I'm already imagining it. It's happening. Life Sense has uh, an imprecise sense, it's an imprecise sense with a range of 10 feet, right? Um, I mean, maybe that's what that says, but mine says your familiar gains life sense with a range of 30 feet. 30 feet, okay. Yeah. Allows you to sense the life force within living creatures and its counterforce that animates the undead. Oh, though wait. you can't distinguish between the two. That's the sort of the basics of life sense, but your John gives you a little greater range. Pause. I'm a better person than I once was because I read the entire thing in front of me and I read the rules now. I don't have a psychopomp familiar. I don't even know what that is. And that's a requirement, so never mind. Okay. I look into the pit. It was really cool, but I appreciate you not cheating like Joe. (laughs) You look in the pit, not uh, your pop it, not egg. Egg can look with me too. All right, you and Egg walk up to these handrails. Egg immediately falls in because it's tiny and dies. You look down and it looks like a surgery room below. Oh. Oh, this is like an operating operating theater. Like a gallery? And and when you guys came up, you saw all these sort of accoutrements that made you think like, this looks like it used to be an infirmary of some sort that has been repurposed into a home, but this is an, a remnant of the old building. And, and you look down there and it's like, the fuck's going on down there? It looks like there's a vat with like something floating around it, this like liquid floating around in it. There's like some like mass of wires and tubes and shit. And there also looks to be like stained glass windows down there, but it's underground. It's very, very strange. Uh, Let's go down there. I can send uh, Egg down there for a bit. 
You just want to see. You also have access to an elevator. There's an elevator. Let's take the elevator down. Is oh. everyone... Aldo's like super curious about this. Yeah. Because it's it all like in his sort of sphere. And, he and Atticus really... is... Yeah, he's jumping right onto it too because this is, it, this is forbidden magic. And it's yeah. kind of always been uh, a thing he's been interested in is, you know, how do you get ahead... Uh, by not following the rules, and so he's very curious about this guy's experiments. But how how's everybody doing health wise? Yeah, I was, I'm going to uh, say, in are this, we good ish? In keep this moving? time, I would have treated wounds on you, Aldo, as well. So you can get 41 hit points back. Oh, thank you. Um, I'm still down a bunch. Do we also bought potions? Yeah, everyone has potions. One. Yeah, there was no need. Uh, I can give a moderate health, health elixir to oh. you as well. Oh, great. Yeah, I'll use that. Yeah. All right. I'll take care of that. Uh, I'm almost at full. Not quite, but that's fine. He's feeling fine. And yeah, I don't think we're good on conditions. Yeah. So yeah, he's good. To, he's like, let's use the elevator. But it looks like get a closer not look. all of us can fit in at once. So I guess who should we send down first? Ethel. <laughs> you could squeeze. I would say you could squeeze. Asps. Very dangerous. You go first. I'd say everybody can, but Pepsi can fit in. No, no, no. Pepsi can take my spot. I'll, I'll jump. No. Just sh- shoot Pepsi down. Pepsi is a giant <laughs> yes. boa constrictor. Shoot him down on an arrow. No, no, no. Pepsi. Oh, sorry. Oh, Pe- sorry. No, sorry. S- no. Oh, you stay. And- oh, sorry. Sorry. We're squeezed. Oh. Ethel, and- Ethel and Aris are squeezed very close. Oh, here. I'll turn this way. Oh, oh, no. Oh, no. Oh. oh. My man. Your fingers right. touch on the down button together. Oh. <laughs> oh, oh. oh. Uh, why are we, why are Suki, we so like this? <laughs> Suki allows Pepsi to go in the elevator with them. She goes, go on, Pepsi. And Suki is going to turn into a bird. Okay, so Suki turns into a bird to allow Pepsi, the boa constrictor, <laughs> this show, <laughs> to hey, fit into the elevator. Look, her feet are like your hands. Oh my god, that's so cool, Suki. Look at us. Suki turns into a hawk, and then she's just perched on the railing overlooking the pit, and she just... This is so dumb. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so... Same. She <laughs> Walk me through this. Uh, there so, are yeah, 19 so, of you. So you stayed, Suki, yeah. on this floor. I'm staying on the okay. railing, looking over to watch you go down. Ah, okay. I'm a bird. Gotcha. What more? What more do you want? No, nope, I'm, I'm with you. I'm a girl bird. I'm on a railing. You're a girl bird. You're very strong. Her, Thank you. <laughs> Aww. Atticus, Atticus, Aldo, hands. Atticus, Eldo, Aris, Ethel, and I wrote Poopsie, because I thought that was yeah. fun. <laughs> Uh, all stuff into this tiny elevator. Poopsie. 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 Who comes out first? Ethel. Ethel. All right. And then who would be behind Ethel? Well, maybe Eris if we're scrunched together. Yeah. Being Ooh. awkward. Oh, sorry. Yeah, right. Let me just uh, get out here. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Uh-huh. Who's after Eris? Me. Ally. And then Atticus and then Poopsie. Yes. Yep. All right. So here's what we're going to do. <laughs> Dummies. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not seeing it. I, I know. I don't I know. see what's that stupid. We had to get down there somehow. You told us to take the Should elevator. No, it's in? fine. It's fine. You, you told us to turn into a girl oh, bird. You guys did very good. <laughs> you guys did very, very good. I, as I very recall. Smart. I, I said I could send bird. down egg, and y'all were like, no, I love creepy stuff. Let's just go. <laughs> <laughs> what could go wrong? Let's knock on the door. Is that what we sound like to you? <laughs> what? <laughs> All this time? All this time? What, I love what a savage stuff. impression of us. <laughs> All right, so this is what you see. Ethel, Eris, Aldo, Eticus, Poopsie. You are in like a lower surgery. Uh, it, it is a wide space, space that has a floor of dingy white tiles and a broad wooden table in its center. Uh, Suki, you look down in hawk form, perched on that little railing, straight down at the table. But now that you're down there, the rest of you get a better view of what it looks like down here. There are three darkened stained glass windows that overlook 
the chamber. They're dark. You're underground. Why would there be stained glass windows underground? It doesn't make any sense. However, you can still see what the designs on them are. Each window depicts an angel. There was an angel theme on the door. gate. Yeah. And on the door, you see it again. Each of these windows is kind of like a triptych, if you know what that is. If you don't, yeah, Google yeah. it. Um, that... <laughs> It basically, each of them has an angel sticking its hands into the body of a patient, like a hospital patient. Are you sticking your hands into your pants right now? <laughs> yep. <laughs> That's what it looks like. I hold my pee for two and a half hours. <laughs> it's an angel just sticking it in there, and <laughs> the... Let's clip that audio. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, cool. it. <laughs> and there's a shining light that sort of emerges from the spot where the angel is sticking its hands into the patient, and all of the patients, or victims, whatever you want to call them, are like this. Uh, is that laughing? No, they're like... <laughs> Joy, uh, oh, uh, ecstasy. uncontrollable joy, ecstasy. ecstasy. Thank you. Just like as the angel is sticking its hands. In the arms <laughs> of the angel. <laughs> you look up and you see the large viewing hole, and the, a hawk is perched up there. <laughs> You assume oh, yeah. it's Suki. <laughs> you see that tower. What, what gender is that bird up there? <laughs> what gender is that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm to sex that bird. Up there. Uh, there's a towering <laughs> glass cylinder standing in the southeastern corner of the room that contains this like sticky yellow mass of protoplasm. Looks like a lava lamp. It's just like whoa, 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 moving around in there. What do you do? Oh, for God's sake. Uh, I'm going to edge, edge out of the elevator so some other people can get into the room. And then perception check. All right. Ethel steps into the room and does a perception check. Can I do a, a cult check? Sure. Uh, that'll be a 31 perception. Ooh. 31 perception. 27 a cult. 27 a cult. And Al is going to peek his head out. And do an alchemy lore check. 34. 34. Okay. Where is everybody standing? Is this where you're actually standing? Yeah, yeah. use yeah. the map. So I can't get into the room right now. No. You can right. walk past me. No. Uh, want... Yes, I could, but I'm not going to walk past anybody. I'll put okay. Poopsie right there in between you guys. <laughs> Little Poopsie. <laughs> Ethel, not, Ethel not will take a step further. So hey, he is, uh, is Poopsie <laughs> small? No. Medium? No. Yes. Wow. I just made Poopsie small because it's fun. <laughs> oh, you did. Look at that. <sighs> there, there's room for you now, Atticus. Okay. Man, a lot going on in here. So, we're in Boston. We can go a little long, right? <laughs> Some of us have to drive home drunk. Oh, we're Don't going do that. long, we're going long. So gird your loins, cause we're going long. We're going long, we're going long. So gird your loins, we're going long. Ah, a little long. We love you, Nicole. A little long. Not unlike Ethel, a little long. <laughs> it's long. What? But how what? <laughs> I'm really going wide. I'm going wide. Good job, Lawrence. We're going wide. All right, Nick. We got to do a sign before you, Nicolo. Text Nicolo right now. We, we need to go in wide. We need, we need to do. We need to do cover variants on. Uh, Means yeah. so much. The going wide <laughs> remix. We're going <laughs> wide. All right. Jeepers, there's so much happening here, but I want to give my hometown a little something juicy to end the night on. All right. All right. Long well, fired up. I could fucking play till midnight easy. But, but, people who work here don't want us I to don't. say that long. I'm so sorry. And I don't blame them. I bartended for 15 years. I know. All right, here's what we're going to do. 
I've never you heard guys rolled before. <laughs> perception, occult, and what the fuck did you roll? Alchemy. 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 Perception. Perception. Occult. occult. Jeepers, make me fucking work. <laughs> all right, so you come into the room, and I imagine all of your eyes are dra- drawn towards this tank here in the southeastern corner of the room. It the really does. lamp. I'm talking whoa, to these whoa, guys. Whoa, Please, whoa, you didn't roll shit. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> they, but yes, they didn't let me in until late. It's just kind of like got this bouncing yellow mass in it. It just boom, boom, boom. But then Ethel and Eris and Aldo and Atticus, even though you're not really uh, taking the room in in the same way all of them are, you notice in the alcove to the east, because there's like three alcoves, the stained glass windows are are around the the northern side of the room, but there's three alcoves, and the alcove to the east is this like, kind of looks like a figure, like a, not a person, because it's not a, a human, it's not anything like the hollow one you just fought, but it's this like person or humanoid looking figure made up of tubing, wire, and steel, but it also has half a dozen or so vats all over its body uh, like that contain vats? various vats, like, like little jars. Vats or like <laughs> no, like jars, basically oh, oh. jars that contain various oily-looking liquids, all different colors: red, blue, blue, green. Uh, and and they also look like they have things floating inside each of these vats. And then you notice that the hands. It looks because it has hands, uh, all end in like hypodermic needles, and the needles all have various color substances that sort of match the jars on its body. Like there are tubes running up its arms that lead to one vat, tubes leading up to another vat. It's like Edward syringe hands. Edward syringe hands. (laughs) So wait, how does he do that? So this is what's depicted in the window? Yeah, or I what's agree. Actually Bottle in the cap room? for me. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? Is this what's depicted in the stained glass window or what's actually in the room? It's actually in the room. It's okay. like a creation from this mad genius that lived here. And when you step into room, the room, Ethel, it like... Oh, no, 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 Let's roll for initiative. No. The only reason we're doing this is I have a better ending. Is it one where we all die? Oh, God. Oh, no. Here's what it looks like. Wow. Hello. Oh, shit. (laughs) Hug me. That is so disturbing. Look at its little eyeballs. His little eyes. Uh, I made of wood? This one is much cuter than what I described. It's kind of cute. It's kind (laughs) of cute. It's kind of adorable. an artist for every fucking monster. Imagine something much darker than this. Okay. okay. Hi, everybody. Hi, guys. Want to play catch? (laughs) My dad never played catch with me. (laughs) (laughs) Aldo, what did you roll? Uh, I rolled a 22. 22. Ethel. Uh, 30. 30 for Ethel. Atticus. Natural one. Oh, no. I'm, and you cheer for him. Bad time for it. 16. I, 16. Take, it, I take it back. It's a 32 for us. <laughs> Eris. 33. 33. Larry. Larry. Suki. 25. 25. I think and this crowd is from Connecticut. I don't hear a lot of oh, Larry um, Bird. Oh, calls. battle cry. Battle cry. Yeah. Here we go. I try to intimidate whatever this is. All right. Do action. action. What well, do you, all right. Demoralize, what do you say? I mean. De- I demor- demoralize it by um, going, I'm going to break that glass head and then put your eyeballs up my butt. What did uh, you say? <laughs> What did you say? I'm demoralizing him. That, that's awful. <laughs> and you don't want to see what's going on up there. Yeah, that's <laughs> probably very true. And Ethel says, yeah. Yeah. But they're going to go up my butt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's a 30. I want them up my butt. <laughs> <laughs> that's a 30 for intimidate, for and, demoralize. And 34 for Ethel. Oh, my 30 God. 30 and a 34. 
All right. <laughs> it doesn't speak your language. I, that's okay, because I have an intimidating... I talk with there my you hands, you know? You've I'm got like... a minus four to the check. Uh, because He it doesn't, doesn't, though. He, he doesn't. He doesn't. Ethel does it because he has intimidating glare. The creature can look into Ethel's eyes and see from Ethel's eyes how much Ethel wants to take his eyes and shove I also up his have ass. intimidating glare. I don't need to speak to intimidate you. This is so fucking dumb. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's Frightened One. Yeah! Oh, you had a better ending? What? Francis is clapping. Francis. <laughs> yeah, yell at him. I will make you frightened yeah, too. Yeah, I'm He's like clapping. doing big claps too. How dare you? You're gonna regret going wrong. All right, wrong. I'm frightened one. Okay. You look it. <laughs> See you in Chicago. All right. With a 33, Eris, you go first. Oh shit. Fuck. This um, fucking thing made of tubes and vats is frightened. So, it's like. <laughs> We're in combat. It's coming at us. It doesn't speak our language. Awesome. Um, I want... This is like Mars Attacks. It looks like something out of Mars Attacks. In my mind, I'm referring to this guy as Pokey. 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 Hi, Pokey. Can I um, do, like, a knowledge check to be like, is there a way for us to, like get it to be on our side? Good like, question. Good question. Good question. Are you making fun of me? No, no. Okay. Roll that knowledge check. Knowledge of general knowledge? Yep. Uh, yep. <laughs> Occultism? Uh, what about, what do you have for knowledge? Um, I mean like arcana, occultism. I think any of those are fine. Okay, I'm gonna do the one I'm best at. A good sign. It's a 28. Okay. I'm going like shit. That's not, that's not bad. No. <laughs> Do you want to elaborate on that? No, you can't win it to your side. <laughs> oh, okay. Now All you have right. two more actions. All right, two more actions. I'm going to use a f- 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 focus spell yeah. to cast a something on an object in the room with piercing, bludgeoning, or slashing damage. Ooh. Uh, by the should, way, uh, it is not demoralized because demoralized has the mental trait and this thing is mindless. Go fuck yourself. There's a brain! There's a brain on the picture! There's a brain right there! That is a picture that I didn't draw. <laughs> anyway, so anything... Our, was anything our best dem- demoralizing material? How dare you? Anything in the room that I can use with... Uh, I guess bludgeoning damage. I'm yeah, thinking just... Yeah, there's a bazooka to the left of Attica. <laughs> are, you, are you sure? Yeah, throw a bazooka at There's it. a bazooka that's sure? loaded with four rounds. No, there's not... I mean, you look in the room, uh, you want to, like, try and throw something. Yeah, there's, there's shit on the back table there if you wanted to, like, mine throw some stuff and shit on the table to the, to the northeast as well. Like something sharp. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. There's a knife. A knife. Awesome. It grows chicken feet. <laughs> oh, yeah! Whoa! Chicken knife! The knife grows chicken feet. Yeah. And chicken uh, with the second action of spirit object, it chucks itself at this thing. Did you just say shots itself? It chucks. Oh, it chucks, oh, it chucks. itself. Catapults, yeets itself. Yes, Yeet. there you go. Uh, <laughs> at the construct. Oh, oh shit, I just closed my character sheet on accident. <laughs> Why are you typing with the chicken feet? Oh, jeez. Oh, God. Oh, it's just, it's loading. Okay, here we go. All right, so chicken knife. Focus spell, spirit object. All right, um, so let's see. It gains locomotion. Two actions casting the spell. Me- melee, melee, spell attack roll huh? against the creature. Do it. There it is. Look at that, Matt. How good does that look? Huh? Plus Gorgeous. All right. Wait, really? Uh, 26. There we go. There we go. Zoom out. 26? 26. Sorry, I was just helping Joe do his job. <laughs> 26 is a miss. Too well, bad it wasn't shit. frightened. That might have been a hit. <laughs> it's... Miss. Damn it. All right. That is your turn. Yep. It is now... 
Ethel's turn. Oh. Okay, Ethel is going to step up to the creature. There you go. Kick its butt. And double slice. Double slice. Okay, okay. Uh, that's a 27 on the Warhammer. Okay. And a 32 on the hatchet. There you go. That's two hits. Ah! Yeah! <laughs> it's just too easy. <laughs> two hits. I think you're going to mop the floor with this encounter. Oh, no. I don't like... I'm so scared. I don't like that. Uh, that is 19 points of damage from the Warhammer. You notice it doesn't all go through. Even the five points of cold? Nope. Okay. And then on the hatchet will be 14 points of damage. Wow. Barely hurt him. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. That concludes Ethel's turn. Oh, Ethel dear. steps up. Schwam, schwam. Suki's turn. Fuck. <laughs> I thought it would be different down here. Suki thinks as a hawk, but I fucked up by turning into a hawk. She flies down, and I would like to... Peck its eyes. Peck its little eyes. Oh, yeah. Peck. It has little eyes. Uh, Does it, though? Because it seemed to not have a brain. That's true. Does it have little eyes? Don't trust the image. Don't trust the image that Troy specifically shows. There I am. Um, Can I... Try to... There's hockey. Hockey's back. I will... It doesn't make sense to try to peck it. It's not going to take any damage. I'll try. I'll... All right. Shut up. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> hey, shut the fuck Stop up. Stop laughing at Sydney. <laughs> yeah, so let, let her fucking play. Guys, shut Let the her fuck do up. her ridiculous yeah, let her do turn. her stupid... Who fight. will defeat this monster? <laughs> Chicken knife or hockey? Oh, <laughs> this is a serious game for serious players. There's a knife with chicken feet and I'm a girl bird. <laughs> girl bird. Um, I peck its eyes. Okay. <laughs> All right, so you go attacking its bulbous fats. Okay, natural 18. Oh! Plus uh, 15, 18, 19, 19, 19. That's 33. 33. 33's a hit. Yeah. yeah! All right, now let's see. So I got a little something called uh, hand wraps that I forget the name of, and I get to double my damage now. So let me do, what am I, pecking? Yeah, my beat. That's 2d8 instead of 1d8. She gets a double her damage, so she just crits yeah. whenever she wants to, <laughs> which is nice. None it's, of that sounds right. It's a good item. That is a solid five points of damage. There you go. <laughs> She when I say the die, the damage. when I say all of you notice that it does zero points of damage, <laughs> I'm not exaggerating. And then there's more. Pepsi is. <laughs> Could <laughs> there even be Do more? It but wait, there's more. You know what? No, uh, I'm going to dismiss my bird form, and I land on the table with a thud. Yeah. Oh snap! All Boom. right, here yeah. comes Sooks Magooks. Shugga so that's my Shugga gunk a souk. Yeah. And Goodbye, hockey. We hardly knew ye. All right, yes. so, yeah. so you land on the table and it shatters and you break your leg. No! Ow! All right. Pepsi comes into the room. That's his action. He just comes behind Suki. It is Aldo's turn as Peps, as Poopsie, slides up right behind Suki. Aldo is going to step through Atticus into the room, get a good look at this thing, do a knowledge check on it. Okay. Can I do alchemy lore? Yes, you can. This is uh, a alchemical that is a 30. Ooh. This is an alchemical golem. Again, just like shit you're not supposed to do, but man, when you get deeper into this alchemical business, You can't help but desire. You can't help but wonder what it would be like if you created life. Perhaps this was a prototype for the hollow one upstairs. Either way, it is a marvel of modern alchemy. It is a golem, so it is immune to most magics. Golem. Golem. Shut up. 
<laughs> couple of things are gonna happen. It has 30 year old. Yep. All right, here's what I'm gonna tell you. It has resistance to physical damage. It is immune to most magic. However, it is harmed by Sonic. And it is healed by another type of damage. And I'm not going to tell you what that damage is. What do you do? I am going... I'm going to pick one kind of bomb to throw at it. That kind of bomb is... Oh boy. All right, I'm going to try fire. Fire. Yeah. My guess fire. is electricity. Electricity heals it? Yeah. You that's think? My, that's my guess. All right, you know what? I'm going to try bottle lightning then. We'll just see. Lightning, hey. All right, we'll try it. You're going to learn either way. All right. Might uh, as well learn when it has no hit point loss yet. Yes, it does. Well, it's just very little. Roll bit. I, yet, you don't know that. <laughs> you don't know. Did we make can a see. I hit it with a hammer. I saw what hockey did. <laughs> tink, uh, tink, 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 tink. Nothing. All right, you monstrosity. Fuck you. Oh, shit. Uh, 20. 20. Uh, it smashes on the wall behind him. But it does splash damage. It does splash damage, and it doesn't seem to affect him. So you feel pretty confident that's not going to work. Okay. I'm done. You're done. Shit. Atticus Grimm. Uh, Atticus Grimm is also going to recall knowledge. He's going to try to identify what kind of magic could hurt it. Yeah. Slash what kind of magic heals it. Sonic Uh, hurts. Sonic Sonic hurts. hurts. Oh, only Sonic, though. Is it only Sonic is the question? And then if... There's something specific that heals it. Might learn some more stuff, though. All right, Arcana? Yeah, sure. Okay, recall knowledge. Arcana, that is a 38. Ooh. There you go. Yeah. All right, it is healed by acid damage. I, that's what I oh. suspected. Okay. Harmed by Sonic, healed by acid. Now, do you want to know... There are two other things I can give you. But I'm only going to give you one. I'll take both. No. (laughs) 38. Mm. Do you want to know? Hmm. Do you want to know what debilitates it or what hurts it? We already know. Well, in addition to what you already know, what further debilitates or further hurts it? I want to know what debilitates it. It's slowed by cold. Ooh. Oh. Shaka, gaga, goo. Like the, like the cold damage I just Let's, did to it? Oh, yeah. He did yes. cold damage just now. That's right. You did. Yes. yes. It's slow. All right. With his 38. Yes. 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 Uh, all right. He is going to cat. Oh, it's great when this works out, isn't it? The- He's going to cast a cantrip, Little Ray of Frost. Yeah! <laughs> All right, two hits. Oh, not bad, 33. That's a hit. Yeah, there you go. Uh, all right, I apologize for how long uh, this this is going to take. Bam, 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 bam. Ooh. Oh, I need a calculator. Uh, that is 16 points of cold damage. 16 points of ray cold of frost directly damage. All right, here's what you notice. It doesn't take any damage, but it is now further slowed. So it was slowed by your hit, and it is now slowed to. Yes. Oh, okay. Nice. All right. All right. Nice. So it only has one action. One action? Oh, that's great. To that's its amazing. turn. One could call it, perhaps, the last action of the night. Oh, oh boo! No! There's a lot of significant others in the audience that want to stay later. <laughs> should keep this going. And what it does 
is that it reaches out its arm and smashes the vat containing the yellow liquid. Oh, with it. oh the lava oh. lamp? It just smashes the lava lamp. And when it does, a large creature emerges. What? A creature so large that it pushes Eris. Oh, no. Oh, my God. Into Atticus, which then pushes Atticus to the north. No. And there is a giant jelly just sitting there. Oh, shit. Flanking Ethel. And we will see you in the Midwest. Thank you. I love you, Boston.